So I have a theory that this is either going to go extremely well or not at all. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the show. I have uh, attempted to try something a bit different. I've logged on to two separate computers at the same time. So technically now I can actually show comments on the screen while I'm talking. So the laptop is doing some of the operative work while I address the comments. Can someone let me know if you can hear me, please? Can you comment one in the chat? And uh, I, I hope ID Godot. Thank you, ID Klein. Can someone please let me know if you can hear me? Okay, in the chat, or maybe I've completely wrecked it. Uh, I don't know, the chat's not updating. Oh no, what's going on? And it begins. Does that mean you can hear me? Someone please let me know. Okay, I can see some comments, that's good. This is very peculiar. I don't know if this is gonna be uh, conducive. Hmm, the laptop is spooling up like crazy. I think I'm actually going to put this aside. This is way too complex. It's a nice idea. Thank you, can hear me? Uh, I never turn up, that's that's true. Okay, thank you, thank you, wristwatch guy. Hmm, I think it's a bit too complex, actually. I'm gonna close this off. It's a nice idea. Now, how am I gonna get rid of this? Uh, hide, and then close it. The laptop is gonna crash if I do continue. So, jeez, oh, I hope this disappears now. Hold on a second, a little bit of a technical glitch. There we go. Okay, let's get right in, get the watches on screen and start. It was a nice idea. A novel idea, but a bit too complicated for my brain. Um, where should I say about? Right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrist Shot Week. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all looking after yourselves. It's been a long time. I've been away for a while, uh, recovering, recuperating, but it's, it's great to be back. Again, please comment as many ones as possible so I know that you can actually hear me. That would be excellent. Uh, that would help me out a lot. Again, this, this format didn't work as well as I thought. Where do I start? Uh, in the chat, let's see. Um, I see Matt Smith, I see Jean-Claude Beaver. He was here a second ago. Raymond, Mason, Giza, Megan, welcome Megan. Uh, who else? T Turbo T2, uh, Thomas, I see you Thomas, uh, Rick, and many more of your wristwatch guys said hi to you. Mark P, there's lots of ones, so good you can hear me, thank you. If you want to get my attention, tag me in the chat. I see Marcello just did. And we can get talking. Uh, Damn, I thought it would be quite quite clean and easy to to highlight comments, but it's very difficult. It takes a bit of brain power to get <laughs> to get that going while also trying to manage the screen. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah, so lots lots is going on, lots has been going on, and I think in the UK we go back an hour or we go we go forward an hour by midnight or one o'clock. So yeah, gonna carry on through. Let's get this started. So I've got a few public service announcements to begin with before the show starts. Um, First, the theme. A lot of the times, the titles of the videos don't really make sense, but this one kind of does. The theme of outlier watches. There was actually a question, I think, by Turbo T2. He left on the Instagram asking me about how these shows work out. And what happens is I don't base the shows on a subject. I kind of base the subjects around the submissions that come in. You've got to know that there's like, when it comes to the submissions overall, there's, I think there's been about 100 emails. That's less than 1% of the audience. So if I had to make a theme around the subject, it would probably be even more difficult, uh, you know, when it comes to being that specific. So outlier watches, you'll understand as the show, as the show continues, as the show goes. Um, what else? Next public service announcement. Next week, next Saturday, I am testing out a new live stream, a new show, a new segment, and that's going to be fun. It's going to take a bit of work behind the scenes for me, but it's a very nice recap of what we've seen over the course of the year. So be ready for that. And yeah, we can actually get into the presentation of the show. Let me get into the chat a bit more and we can start talking. Right. Let's see. Great to have you back, Rick. It's a pleasure being back. Um, gotten all the drugs out of my system, which is nice. I've been on a antibiotic, which has really kicked my ass over the last couple of weeks. So it's uh, it's good to be just you know, able to you know, have some energy and stamina back again. That's mainly why I've been taking such a long break between these shows. But uh, it's also nice because it reignites the passion and the enjoyment getting you know you get out of these these marathons. Okay, I'm drinking wine tonight. A Shiraz from Spain, and I got to tell you, next to whiskey, it's like fruit punch. So it's a bit uh, peculiar. I see Eric Bell in the chat. Scotland came in clutch last night hey the vitamins okay so megan says uh, ready for the show big screen got the team cheese plates uh oh, please please stop making me jealous i wish i could eat while presenting how cool would it be hearing me chowing down behind the scenes yeah and the rest of you here please tag me in the chat that the chat's going ballistic and i will be sure to answer whatever you ask that's what makes it great so uh outlier watches can you believe it's been a year since i've owned this watch 
this actually sums up the last two weeks worth of videos that I've put out on the channel. Most recently, text on watches. The, the amount of text we see on watches that are getting, it's getting so overblown with a lot of modern pieces. Um, after the show, I'll link it in the corner of the screen if you're catching up. And then the week before, I was talking about the Seamaster 300 and uh, the new release that actually happened this week. I, I made a render of the watch before it was launched and did a whole discussion around it and redesigned the watch. So that was also a good time. I'll also link that in the corner of the screen for anyone who's watching the show after it's finished. I see Demetrius joining us from Greece. Tao, good to have you here, Tao. Hans, welcome, Hans. Rugby's been quite interesting over the last few weeks, huh? That's yeah, been... Uh, it's been fun. And I don't know what else is going on in the chat. Everyone, like I've said more than once, everyone comes for the watches and stays for the for the community. <laughs> All right. Thanks to Clan Fundamerva. Yeah, that was good. Huh? That was a good lucky try. Those two games, I literally walked out of the room. Uh, both the French and England game last weekend and the, uh, the Scotland game. I walked out in the last 10 minutes and then, you know, they both turned it around. It was really good. Rick was saying, oh, spot on, re, too much text on many watches. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun talk. Um, anyway, I want to get away from this. I'm going to be spending way too much time. I've been, you know, for the last five minutes, listening about with trying to work out how to highlight comments. <laughs> it didn't work very well. <laughs> um, and I see 121 is joining us and, and the rest of you here. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Right. Let's get started. So, hmm, let's jump to Russell because Russell deserves to make the cover. This is episode 25 of Wrist Shot Week, 25 episodes, and Russell has never made the cover of the show. He sent this in last week, and for those of you who don't know, the 20th of March in the Northern Hemisphere, I think, I don't know how it works, I'm still new to the Northern Hemisphere, uh, has to, it's to do with the, the spring equinox, and the tellurium highlighted the spring equinox, that's, that's the beauty behind it. So what makes this cool is that I can actually have it sitting on the screen, I don't know if this watch is upside down in this picture. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, that's a better shot of it being offset. Okay. What I'm going to try and do is read a basic description of this watch for you out there to get us warmed up. This is definitely the, the epitome of an outlier watch. It has an awesome history. And as far as watchmaking goes, it's got, it's got an ETA movement, but uh, it's all platinum. And we can have a look at the movement shots in a moment too. So yeah, let's have a look. Chaz, good to join. Well, welcome here. It's going to be good. There's, uh, there's lots going on. We have a huge selection. All I can say is that I can't thank you enough for sending in these, these pieces. Uh, some of our favorites are going to be featured, of course, but then so many outliers and unique models, vintage, the whole shebang. Uh, it's a jam-packed show. And you know, in total, there's about 130 submissions. Look on the left-hand side of the screen as I scroll. Yeah, we've got a lot to go through. So I don't know if wine was the best choice today, but... So let me try and highlight the Ulysse Nodan Tellurium. Uh, where's a good shot? This was the cover photo shot, I think. And I don't know if this highlights the Equinox exactly, but we get a good idea of it in a presentation. That's definitely an outlier, right? That's what it's, it could be summed up as. I've opened up a tab to uh, Hodinki, and I'll read a basic description of this watch because it's, it's deep. I mean, there are books written just on this watch. Basically what happened in the 90s was Ulysse Nodan released a trilogy of watches celebrating, you know, the earth and just, just marvels. And the Tellurium was one of the three. So it's an enamel dial. I think the watch is platinum. It's about 39 millimeters in size. And it just gets more and more complex the more <laughs> the further you read. Uh, this, is, uh, this is actually probably the best image to look at. Let's see what I can highlight here for all of you. Um, oh gee, and I'm just going to pick bullet points. Prime Meridian and the Greenwich. It's all it's all centered very nicely. You have a snake's head. Let me see if I can find some better stuff to read as I'm going through. Um, if you look closely, you'll see a green head that looks like a stylized serpent's head. And it's right here at the corner. And its tail is on the far side. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's the serpent's head. I don't know what that means, but let's try and find out. Um, uh, another opposite to that looks like a snake's tail. Okay, These are indicators for what is called the moon's nodes. The orbit of the moon is titled somewhat with respect to the plane of the ecliptic. Common plane. Oh, this is like a science lesson, man. I can't talk through all of this, I can, especially starting the show. I mean, I'll, I'll, I know we've got Latin going on. No, I can't do that. Okay. Um, the nodes precess. I'm just going to put the, the damn link in the chat. What am I doing trying to read this out to you all? There we go. 
have a read. It's a crazy complicated watch. That's all you need to know. It does everything. It tells you moon phases. It tells you, you know, where the earth is rotating. It does all those rota full rotations. It uses an ETA based caliber. That was stupid of me. Why did I decide to read through the thing? The movement itself is in full platinum too. So it's an ETA based caliber that's had just everything stripped and redone, uh, hand fully hand engraved. Uh, and it's, I think you also mentioned that it's power reserve and it's, it's functionality is better than his 5711. It hacks, it's got lots of other little external features. So talking about a watch that is the outlier, I mean, just look at that. Talking about a watch that is an outlier, the Hodinkee article sums it up perfectly. Um, fully goes into the history and the meaning of it. And if you'd like to have a bit of extra reading, that's the way. It's, again, like I said, it's like a full-on science lesson. <laughs> is that the weather forecast? I swear it does that too. Uh, okay, going to catch is that earth time. Les, I wish I knew. And I see Carl joining us and Tim and all in her movements. It's going to be great to feature your watch in a second, Penny. I saw Flip and Zipper as well. Um, uh, this is good. You got this. Samra, I tried. I failed miserably, but I tried. Uh, Tao, it's definitely an outlier using Roman and Arabic numerals on the bezel to begin with, and it's only starting there. Yeah, it's it's hella complicated. And again, it's not something you can just understand. You have to study this thing. And I don't think it's the best to start the show to go through a full science lesson, lesson on a Saturday. Let's get some more alcohol in me. I think I need it. Move it needs fancier finishing, Mason. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive, i got to say. The other the other two watches, uh, you know, Russell has all the books. I don't think he'll be joining us until 11 o'clock. So... Uh, Nice to have featured his watch to begin with. Uh, hitting the Shiraz again. I think I'm going to code name it Fruit Punch. It just doesn't have any <laughs> effectiveness next to the um, the whiskey that normally goes down the hole. Right, we're going to start now with the next submission. Russell, it's a gem of a watch. We have featured it before, and this one was very useful since we've just crossed over the, uh, the spring equinox, March 20th. And this line basically... It, you know, emphasizes the equinox, gold wires highlighting the moon phases. And oh, it's a bit too hectic to start the show with this. What am I drinking tonight? Bonaventure asks. It's a Spanish Shiraz. No, no whiskey for a change. I think that was a big mistake, but we'll see. So to Joseph next. Now, why am I featuring Joseph? Well, he's wearing a long pond, and one of my favorites. This is also a serious outlier. So it's the, it's the Le Mans Ultra Slim Aqualung. And I stumbled across a video the other, the other day, and it's Blancpain's basic documentary of the history of the, the Aqualung and the 50 Fathoms, and it's the best dive watch history video I've ever seen. So being good guy, ID guy, I've got the link. I'm dropping it in the chat for you now. If I can recommend one video for you to watch now or just save for tomorrow, whatever, that's the video. There's two parts to it, and it's basically an hour-long discussion with the original CEO who came up with the idea for the 50 Fathoms and what it all meant and the design and the technology that went into it. It's superb. It's just so professional. Um, the best I've ever seen. So that's why I wanted to feature this watch first. And he did say to me in the email, Joseph, that I would take this over an Explorer any day. So would I. I think... You know, it just, it just covers all the bases. It has sword hands. It has the quarter Arabics that I love. They're not too stylized. It's simple. I think they call it like the Putin because that's one of his favorite watches. Yeah, Putin watch, as, uh, as George mentions. And it's just beautiful. It's so understated too. I think it was released right around the year 2000. And it's, it's a gem. I mean, check the movement out. It's proper gold rotor. Yeah, I would totally add one of these to my collection, given the chance. It's, it's a gem. Not so much of a fan of them putting their name on the side of the case, but you know, you know, it's all right. Uh, I think there's mention about scratch magnets. Oh, it's about AP. Yeah, we can definitely discuss that later on. Uh, all in her movements, Penny has just picked up her first AP, and it's going to be a good time chatting about that. So this, again, have to. I'll put. I'm going to put it in the chat again for anyone out there. Watch it. It is so good. I had such, it was such an enjoyable time listening to a proper narration and you know all the archive footage and uh, footage of divers under the water, like camera filmed with these watches on. Um, so nice looking piece, good way to start and just underrated, fully underrated. Discussing text on watches again, I just think they have nailed it. 
this might be a little bit too ex too much, but 100 hours, that's something to boast about on such a, a small watch. Yeah, that's one of their claim to fames, right? Okay, let's leave this on the screen while I get to you in the chat. How long have I been talking already? 14 minutes, and we haven't even started the show. But God, it's going to take a while. Uh, Carl, I watched the 250 Fathoms videos this week. Very informative. Yeah, it was superb. Can't, cannot recommend it enough. Um, Z Ziraha says, hi, good to have you here. I guess this Blanc Pond example is uh, of too much print in the dial. 100 hours, what does it mean? It's got a 100-hour power reserve. That's what makes them very special. Uh, it's it's one of their calling cards, actually. When, and I learned this in the video, that when the brand was you know revived in the 90s, the, the dive line, uh, one of the big things they wanted to put into their 45 mil divers was such a long power reserve. And 100 hours is kind of their claim to fame now with, with all of their pieces. Uh, Mason says, the name on the side of the case isn't as noticeable as people think. Yeah, I mean, it's what's also a nice saving grace is that it's not fully polished. So it does look quite subtle. I look great. I mean, if you're wearing the watch on the right wrist, you would never see it, which I do kind of like. Um, it's like a it's like a signet. Stunning looking watch. Such a great piece to start. So talk about two outliers. I think this was a good start. Two of these pieces that are pretty understated. Uh, they're not spoken about. They don't they don't really shout too much about themselves. But uh, yeah, good format to begin. Four hours and three minutes. Are we taking bets? I think we should, Eric. It's a nice idea. <laughs> Again, tag me in the chat if you want to get my attention. There's so much going on here. Debates and discussions going on behind the scenes. Uh, let's see, George. Pound the drums. It's actually... See, you guys are just chatting amongst each other. I see Mark. I think I said hi to you already, Mark, in the chat. Never owned a Blanc Pound, maybe. Rick, if you can find some of the military reissue pieces, would recommend. Would highly recommend. Um, right. So, <laughs> let's get on to Adam first. Now... Adam is very grateful and ungrateful about these shows because it was because of the show that he picked up this piece. The Gorilla Gift <laughs> The Gorilla Gift Elise Drift Elise GT Limited to 350 pieces. Now this is an awesome piece. The whole Gorilla brand, they've done such a good job. Sadly, we can't see the, the actual uh, name on the dial. But he was a designer for AP that left and started his own his own brand, I believe, if I remember that history right there. What a cracking machine. It's sports. It's experimental. You can see how it has that has an work sort of uh, approach to how the dials arrange themselves. In fact, I think th the same movement is used in this watch. Someone someone help me out. I'm sure Megan would probably know better than, than anyone in this category. But uh, we are featuring, featuring an work later on. Oh, geez. I've already finished the coffee. I'm going to have to be very careful with what I drink tonight just to, you know, savor the four hours. It's a great looking watch, though. Very uh, prototypical, very experimental, nice colors, uh, good spot colors there. So it's called, again, Gorilla, as in, you know, the ape, Drift Elise GT. Just have a look at the Gorilla brand, Gorilla watch. It's it's nice. Designer for AP, easiest job ever, Andreas. Yeah, I agree. I do agree. Um <laughs> Talk about the code 1159. That's going to be a nice subject to discuss one of these days because I think their their watches deserve a lot more praise and attention. I see Watching World Finance is joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here. Mark saying 17 minutes in, intro and one watch. Yeah, it's a joke. I mean, I, I allow you to laugh at me and my ineptness. Um, star wheel. Yes, yeah, so it's a great piece. It's very quirky. It's definitely not for everyone. It's, it's a sports piece through and through. Very, uh, you know, again, like I said, prototype functionally focused. But then the next watch is completely different in this in this zone. And this is also from Adam, and it's a Grand Seiko, but it's not the typical Grand Seiko. It is the Godzilla. I like how he's done this, where, you know, <laughs> one is a gorilla theme and one is a Godzilla theme. I think we, we kind of understand him as a collector. <laughs> so the reference is, <clears throat> this is going to roll off the tongue, SBGA405. Limited to 650 pieces um, with a pizza. <laughs> he says in the description, with a pizza oven because appropriate. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone's been outside getting to cook something in the good weather we tend to have on occasion in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so the Godzilla is quite a, it's, it was a very popular watch. When it came out, it was talk of the town and it's a cool looking machine. It really is a stunning machine. Something's just crossed my mind. Um, 19 minutes in. Are you hearing me through the microphone? Does the sound appear clear? 
or am I talking? Can you can you hear like the reverberation in the room? If you missed the beginning of the show, I was experimenting with something and the laptop might be picking up the audio. I don't know. Comment one if you can hear Sam. Okay, that's good. So you can hear me pretty clear. It's nice. It's pathetic that I can't hear myself back. Okay, good. Thank you, Dr. Bob and, and Rick and Chaz and everyone else. Thank you. That helps. It does help. The presenter, presenter needs a bit of feedback sometimes. <laughs> Sounds very good. Thank you, Mark. Okay, awesome. So yeah, it's awesome. It's a nice looking piece. I gotta fix my, my wordplay. It's a really nice looking piece. It has this presage style to it, you know, cocktail time, the way the dial has these these striations across it. And you know, as we know, Seiko and their texture is sublime. Very seldom do you see a red dial on these models, which is great. This is what I don't enjoy about watches with deployants. When when you have to wear the watch upside down to wear the deployant, and this ends up looking like a red rocket from a you know a male dog and his red rocket on your wrist. That's when I draw the line. I think uh, it's it's an issue. Some brands have managed to address it so well. I th when I think of deployments, I think, hmm, um, I love how Blanc Pond does it. I love how JLC does theirs. Uh, Alunga is a little bit mm, on the edge. JLC is, did I say that already? JLC, Blanc Pond, Patek are also very good with their deployments. Some brands, it's, it's all down to the, the, the extent of the arm. I don't have a picture of the deployment for you to look at, but the extent of the arm and how it wraps around your wrist. Sometimes it can wear very uncomfortably. So in order to counter that, they switch it around and you, you get the red rocket that you're seeing here. Quite fitting, you're looking at a red dial. Nice looking piece, it is a gem. I think it's got a sapphire cap bezel and uh, we've spoken about bezels before. Uh, I see Dear Artifact joining us. Can't wait to feature your Speedmaster later. Uh, and I see Marcello in the chat. I bought a Camille Fournay strap. I've never heard of that brand. Oh, I look forward to seeing it too, sharing it. Um, Marcello, ind fellow industrial designer, I think he must have graduated by now. Uh, he knows his stuff. He has such a great collection, just on the nose, exactly to what you would expect from a designer and uh, brilliant. I'd love to feature it again, Marcello, in future. Omega deployments are tight, are tidy. Yes, Dr. Bob, they're a good example too. So yeah, it's all, it's all uh, up to interpretation. It also is down to the wrist size. Sometimes if you have a smaller wrist, it's it's less comfortable and, and so it is. Anyway, Adam, awesome two pieces, Gorilla and Godzilla. Was that, you know, isn't there a, a King Kong film that's out at the moment? Kind of kind of lines it up pretty well. Right, moving up next, let's see. Albert sends in a really cool little watch that he picked up in Hong Kong. Stellar dial, day date. And he did mention in the, in the mail to me that getting the stellar dial is one thing, but on a bracelet is quite special. So this is pretty cool. And I do like this pairing, you know, Capote and uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. So let's have a look at some detail because he took some great shots of this watch. And I, I feel a bit on the fence about how stellar dials have been pushed in. It's very bright on my screen. Avoid your, you know, avert your eyes if it's too bright for you that side. But... Uh, yeah, the, the way the collector market's going now, the professional sports watches, they're flying out the doors. So now a lot of resellers are putting these up. And you notice that very often. In auction catalogs too, they have fully dedicated segments to these pieces. And yeah, it's, it's a love it or hate it thing. But this condition is superb. Look at the tritium, how it's aged. Yeah, it's nice. First day date. This is the first Rolex we're featuring. There's going to be quite a few later on. And the most sought after ones by far. And by the end of the show, I've saved one of the best watches for last. You'll see it. It's just, oh, it's a gem. It is an absolute gem. Yes, let's catch up with the chats again. I've got to get myself back into the scheme. Uh, Mason says, I like the Grand Circle Godzilla, but for the Godzilla image on the crystal at the back, puts me off. Do they actually have a, that's funny. So, oh, don't tell me it's like a, it's like an Omega situation where they have the actual print on the crystal and you can't see the movement. That doesn't, I don't understand why any brand would do that. AP code 11, just waiting for social media influencers to love it and it'll triple in price. Yes, Turbo, as we know, uh, I would say within the next year or two, the code 1159 is going to be on everyone's minds. And if they continue to, you know, explore the watch, it's going to be such a big shift. Speaking of which, we're going to have a look at a code 41 later on. And yeah, it's a, one of my favorite new micro brand watches out there. I don't know if you would call it micro brand. Um, Slat's saying thanks for the hard work. It's my pleasure. These shows are a joy because you send them in. It takes a bit of time to save them and rename them, but I mean, it's, it's a pleasure doing it. It really is a pleasure. And what is so nice is that we get to see so much in a, in a small space over the course of two hours, three hours. 
Chrono Craze, now that the new Amiga Seamaster 300 has officially been released, does it change your thoughts about it since you made the video? The bronze gold? Yes, I would absolutely own that bronze gold model. It's, it looks gorgeous. That'll be discussed next weekend, I promise. Uh, it's going to be a fun show. So this is cool. We, you know, we, we've been talking about the, the hype Oyster Perpetuals that came out end of last year, and this is a watch essentially from the 80s, right? A stone dial. And, you know, this, is, this was the precursor. This is pretty much where they grabbed the inspiration and, you know, turned it into a, a desirable again. So it's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, Megan says the blue looks like enamel on the Rolex. It does. I don't even know if they if they call these stone dials. I'm so behind when it comes to this <laughs> this zone of the collector space. Really nice pairing though, Elvis. We featured a few of your watches in the past, and they look they look pretty stunning. Okay, moving on to Ashley next. Now, this was fun. This was one of the first submissions I think a couple of weeks back. It's a Yema Junior 33 mil, and he mentioned in the email that he likes to tinker with watches. So he picked this up for dirt cheap. Reminds you of a few vintage divers from back in the day. And the question he sent was basically to restore or not to restore. Do I leave it in this condition or or not? So I'm going to leave us on the screen and <laughs> catch up with you in the chat if I can. If I can. Again, tag me in the chat. It's the easiest way <laughs> easiest way for me to catch what you ask. Um, Matt, it is most definitely your code 11, code, your code 41. All right. I see Jeffrey saying... I'll just I just flip my Seiko deployments around and wear them normally without issue, and I mean that's the thing you can you can do that no problem. I find it more of a problem with leather straps, leather deployments, um, that some have some have issues. Some have been corrected over time. Some are still very difficult to wear on certain wrists. Taking a hit from the fruit punch. It's a very nice wine, but uh, it's not very potent. Right, let's see turbo eleven fifty nine again. Double curved crystal is amazing. Yes, I mean, the cases are too. There's so much design to them. They, they really are gorgeous. There are lots of Yemas, by the way. Megan's just saying, uh, oh, yes, a Yemma. There's going to be lots on the show. We have Navigraphs. We have Yachtigraphs, the full package. And yes, a small seconds. I didn't realize. Let's get another shot up uh, front. So this is the watch in all its glory. And I think it has a nickel case to it. And he is... Um, He's just divided on whether he should restore it or not. I mean, if it was me, I'd probably just clean up the crystal, make sure the movement works. Sad about the loom of the hand that's fallen out, but uh, you can find these vintage watches for absolute steals, basically anywhere in the world. So would recommend looking at them. But this is 33 mils, I think. Or is it 330 feet? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, again, when it comes to emails, I'm saving them at like 2 in the morning and just putting the name and attaching the watch. So this watch has definitely been worn in its life. It's seen a couple of couple of wear and tear, battle scars. Looks like a Zodiac Seawolf. I mean, Raymond, that's it, right? Parts bin specials. A lot of these watches when they were made were just assembled from bits and pieces. And here's a good example. The bezel doesn't even fit the watch. You notice how the bezel has been cut off. <laughs> so they probably just took it to a grinder and, and shaved off the end of it so that the numbers could, could fit in place. That's so funny. Yeah, you can learn a lot. I, I love, I, I've said this so many times, I love the history behind the developmental divers. I, I think that's where my real passion lies in this hobby is understanding this development of these concepts and no, they didn't make much sense and they weren't the perfect form. They, they showed you the, the gradual stages of how these developed. And from it, we can learn so much about what worked, what didn't work, what should have stayed. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's a fun hobby. It's what I enjoy. I love um, creative. Yes, <laughs> Raymond asking, are you featuring my my uh, Andretti? It's definitely going to be featured. 37 mils, Ashley. Thank you. So I'm guessing 33 has got to do with the, the death rating, 330 feet. <laughs> I was saying mint condition. Absolutely. This is untouched. Untouched. This has been left in a drawer all its life. It is cool uh, that the loom on the hands were, would shine on the dial as well. Two side shine. Yeah. Yeah, and Rick on watches. Watches are meant to be worn. Love seeing battle scars. I think it's good. I think it's good. So, Ashley, thank you for sharing. I'm really slurring my words tonight. Thank you for sharing this watch, Ashley. It's uh, it's great to see a Yama. So, so similar to the RS65, too. These skin diver profiles were very popular um, and then around that time. Uh, and Mason saying thanks for the video about text on dials. I loved it. It was so much fun. I'm, I'm really getting enjoyment out of doing these, these 
uh, you know, philosophical discussion based points instead of focusing on specific watches. It's nice to look at it as a bigger picture. Okay, let's move next to Zach. I've put Zach at the top because it's nice to see a Cartier for a change. Cartier Tank Solo Large Quartz. This was his first luxury watch, and we barely ever see tanks, so it's a nice time to feature it. Um, I, I've really enjoyed that discussion. I've got a whole load of them lined up, by the way. I've got a whole series of, of different talking points around themes. And type on watches, I think, is so important, and it's just not looked at. You know, the modernization of a sports watch, what it represents. And here's an example of a piece that pretty much nailed it. No, it, what's, what's the word? Expo expository detail, just the name of the watch, Roman numerals, a little secret signature at the base of the dial here, and that's it. It's clean, stunning. And these shots, I've got to tell you, um, I always congratulate and thank you for sending these in. The quality of some of these photographs are just professional grade. And, you know, it's it's a joy. It really is a joy to feature. I hope you're you're getting some good feedback on your, hope you're watching this on a big screen. Uh, it's, what, it's what really makes it a, a good experience. Um, yeah, thank you, Ashley, again. And the rest of you in the chat, I see faded bezel, bleached bezel. Yeah, those are cool. Um, Tao ta saying the condition of that Yemma was A minus minimum wear. <laughs> yeah, and as as far as a first watch goes in a collection, I think these Quartz Cartiers are superb. Uh, the size is also fantastic as a solo. Um, and it's just, I want to do a video about the Reverso versus the tank and how they stack up. Where do they where do they exactly line up together? They're so similar, but they're so different. And I think they share the same genre, actually. They share the same space, wouldn't you say? I think you could have them on virtually equal playing fields. Um, but then you consider that the Reverso was more of a sports watch. That's cool. It's, it's a really nice talking point. So that'll be something in the future, Reverso and Tank. But look at the finishing. I mean, you can really appreciate the blued hands. And we do have a Reverso later on, courtesy of Curtis. So we'll be seeing that in a moment. And, you know, the cobuchon, the, the blue leather, the, the jersey, everything's lined up. It's gorgeous. It's a really nice presentation. But that's not all. Um, uh, and Mason's saying, look at the print height. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. It's not so much just about applying print to the dial, but it's the level of depth to the print. In fact, we're going to see some good examples mentioned by a few owners later on who took photos of the dials at offset angles. We can appreciate just how text has been raised and, uh, you know, expressed. It's just it's light play. It's simple things like this. It's such an elegant watch. And then, you know, it's it's simple enough, but in a certain light, you can appreciate the roundness. And uh, I think the tank is gorgeous. I, it's it's one of the most iconic watches of all time. And I love that too. Um, compared to watches like the Submariners and the Speedmasters, this one is even more timeless, we could say. It still has Roman numerals on the dial, but it's still considered to be just an absolute modern classic. I love it. Um, Add the prints to your tank and reverse. Yeah, of course, I will watch and pray. There's there's so much. I mean, the whole idea of these rectangular watches, that could be a theme in itself. Um, yeah, different clientele, sure thing. Sam Ray asking, got any Zins? Got lots of Zins. You, you'll you see them in a moment. Uh, first German watch of the show, I think, next, uh, Jung Hans Max Bill. It's kind of atypical. We know this watch pretty well. And uh, this is also from Zach. Yeah, I've said this quite a lot of times that the Bauhaus, the Bauhaus design is either hit or miss for me. Um, it's quite a, kind of weird for a designer to say that, but um, we're going to have a look at a swatch later on that I think absolutely nails the Bauhaus design. And oh, you're kidding me. It's the same guy. In a second, we're going to see a watch that I think nails Bauhaus in, in a fun, stylish way that's not over the top and it just looks fantastic. So here we, so this is, this is a very good comparison you're going to see in a moment. Um, right, missing you in the chat. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Uh, so German. <laughs> so watch and pray. Sometime you want to go where everybody knows your name. How I we feel about this live stream. Watch and pray. Is that is that the thing? Is that how it works? I don't know. Yeah, these these presentations are good fun. I always enjoy them. Uh, and Eric, I, I think he's quoting music again. I'm I'm going to be struggling tonight, Eric. I don't have enough alcohol in my system. Really, I'm I'm running on less than half a glass of of Shiraz. <laughs> Uh, and Megan says, I love the Cartier tank as a collector, yep. Um, over the Reverso, but I prefer the JLC Duo Face Reverso. We're going to be seeing one later, I think. I don't know if it's a Duo Face, but it's a goodie. It's it's a large. Um, yeah, they're, they're awesome. Rectangular watches, just within this this area, uh, 
you can learn so much, so much more appreciation instead of just the rounded forms. Mm, I love Bauhaus. Okay, theme from Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, again, I'm going to be so behind on that. So we have the Young Hans Max Bill. Clean, simple, pencil, hands, just a typical architect's watch. You can imagine someone sitting behind a drawing board plotting this out, right? Then we switch to the Swatch 1907 BAU Bau. This, to me, is what I think a Bauhaus watch should be represented as, and it's a cracking little thing. So this is also from Zach. And here we can appreciate just the, the differences. Just try, and, just try and put yourself back into that time. We have restrained, very German, and then we have playful, stylish. Bear in mind that this was happening at the same time, in the same building, in the same school, which is what I, I find quite bizarre. And you can appreciate just how, how diverse these two approaches were in the same time, the 1920s, 1930s. So it's awesome. This little thing, I mean, if I had the chance of designing a Bauhaus, in quotations, a Bauhaus watch, this would be the theme. This is the kind of approach I would make it. Uh, and it's a swatch. I mean, how cool is that? It's just, it's just fun. Love the colors, the, the red, you know, the red, yellow, blue, black, that's, you know, white. Those are all the primary colors that were used. I don't know what he's reading, but... Uh, Looks like it says Cartier. I don't know. I'm not even going to try. Nice looking piece. Really interesting presentation seeing these two together. I was going to actually, I made a, a mental note to thank Zach for featuring these two because we can see just how uh, these two watches conflict in the, same, uh, in the same market space, basically. Okay. Hitting, let's hit some water for a change. The voice is already going 36 minutes in, so Fisherman's Friends will be handy. And everyone's chatting about collections and what they're collecting. Ask me a question. If you'd like to you know, ask me a question around a subject, that's kind of going to be next week's live stream in a way. It's going to be a bit more open-ended and uh, hopefully a lot more discussion-based instead of me just talking over these pieces. But uh, it's, it's good. Oh, it's a pleasure, Zach. I see you in the chat. Thanks for the kind words. That's a pleasure. I mean, I, I dig it. I really like your taste. You can see there's a very specific taste in watches that you prefer. Simple, toned down understated and it's nice just seeing three different sectors you know we have a swatch a couple hundred bucks young hans basically a thousand and cartier which is two grand up it's good pick up a new guitar sam Ray says as a question uh so i'm jumping to brett next and this was a good comment that brett left in the email uh I've, i don't have any thoughts on picking up a new guitar at the moment actually no um i'm pretty much set with a d28 martin d28 reimagined I think that's what they call it. It's a gem. And it's only getting better with age. It's it's over three years now. And it just it just rings like a charm. So Brett sent in a 1995 Seamaster Professional Quartz. Uh, the reference for anyone out there interested is a 2542.80.0. It's a, a mint. Really nice example here. And it has the polished bezel. This has been it, it's a theme that that kind of disappeared over time with this piece. And it's one of the first, I mean, think about it that way. One of the first models in this area. And I think he did say in the email that he wears this every day. It's a superb watch just to get around in. And I fully agree. Um, what's nice is that it keeps all of those classic traits. I think it is a tritium dial back then too. Don't ding that bezel. That's the one downside is that the bezel is uh, prone to scratching, prone to damage, I would say, for sure. But a lot of us here love Omega. It's good. Uh, we're going to see quite a few of them during the show. I'm a huge fan. I think of all brands out there. If I had to run a brand, I would love to run Omega. Um, <laughs> watching World Finance. Uh, I'm becoming a star of, of watch ASMR through these videos. Am I? That's the question. <laughs> ASMR is that whole sound thing, right? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, another hit from the wine, I think. Let's, let's do it. Eric is dropping numbers now. I don't know if we're talking about scores or, or whatever's going on. And it's also about the strap choice. Yeah, very good point. That's from, um, from Wristwatch Guy. I agree. Uh, rubber straps. We're going to see a few of them. I've got to say this theme of outliers is a very persistent one. We're going to be seeing lots of Zins, vintage Longines, and it just doesn't stop. A Zin Navi timer later on, Doxes. Um, of course, we're going to get to the Moses and the Rolexes and, and the watches that we recognize often, but micro brands in here too. It's going to be good fun. But like, I'm really impressed by the variety. And this comes from someone who's done 25 of these. 
these shows still impress me. <laughs> the submissions are still exciting. Um, Zero Artifact says Omega is knocking it out the park over the last couple. Yeah, they are. I think they're doing a good job. We can definitely talk about that later on. When we get to your watch, actually, Zero Artifact, it'll be a superb talking point. Um, as for the new Seamaster 300, uh, I'm not sold. I love the bronze gold. I would happily own that watch. I think what they've done with the numerals there on that piece, it feels so period correct. It feels accurate. Uh, the others mm, still haven't been won on. Again, I've made a video about that two weeks ago. Right, let's carry on through here. So, Brett, awesome piece. Nice to see a, a quartz Seamaster in, in action being used on a rubber strap. Superb daily. Don't have to worry about it. Now we're jumping to Bruno. And he features, let's have a look, what's the best shot? So this is a Zin 144 STSA. I think a lot of us know this watch. And a couple of us here watching actually own the vintage variants of these. Bruno goes by the username of Urzinner, as in S-I-N-N-E-R. And it's superb. I mean, talk about this often enough that Zin understands contrast and balance. And it's we've just looked at typical German approaches of the Bauhaus method. But here we can easily identify that this is also German in the way the cases have been done and the finishings nice and clean. No, no polishing. It's brushed full on, you know. Right. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Zerar says, I always like the wavy dial pattern. Yeah, it really describes the purposes of the watch without excessive print. And we will see some modern ones later on too, which is going to be good. I think the engraved ceramic was one of the best things they did on the, the new models. So Tao says, uh, you would like to run Omega because one could fix the brand so easily from us. Yes, yes. I would most definitely tighten up a couple of, uh, a couple of areas where I think they are struggling. Uh, the whole thought of of reissues and and how they're approaching it, there's some good stuff. They, they're taking a lot of language from their old designs, but then I think they also need to modernize a few things. If you watch the Seamaster video, it'll sum it up pretty well, uh, redesigning that watch. We all love a good orange hand. Is orange hand watching? Should be should be pretty good if he's here with us. Uh, it's just a stunning machine. It's simple. You got a day date, full chronograph feature. I've been looking at the um, the Longines Big Eye. As a, as a good watch to add to the collection for that reason of it's just got beautiful design elements and it's it's an excellent daily wearer it's stylish yeah it's cool russell's in the chat good to have you here russell we featured your watch in the very beginning uh, i made a complete mess of trying to describe it so i put the link to her in the chat for people to read uh but your your Ulysse nadan was a good start a really good start and here's some some idea of depth too I do enjoy these depth shots where we can appreciate the angle of the tachymeter. I didn't realize it's actually got a pulsation dial to it too. Tachymeter and pulsations. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just a superb machine. Um, so Zin, this is the first Zin of the show. We're going to see some more later on, and it's going to be going to be fun. What else is going on? More, <laughs> Rick says more limited editions. Yes, if I was involved with Omega, absolutely more limited editions. Everything should be limited. Not to a couple thousand. I'm talking like 500 pieces, the way Blancpain does it. Um, and Megan says, very nice. Zinn needs to get more into this brand. Yeah, Zinn does deserve more attention by a lot more people. We're going to have a look at a beautiful U50 shot later on. Stay around for that because that piece just knocks competition out of the park. Wait and see. It's one of my favorite dive watches in the Zinn line. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Moving on next to Cedar Canoe. Thank you, Bruno, for this. Cedar Canoe sent in two vintage Longines. First, I think these are both hand wounds. First from 1955. You can see the typical marker points. We were chatting about the code 1159 earlier on and notice the numerals on this watch. Uh, it's pretty amazing to consider that watches of the 50s, a lot of them adopted the same type. Rolexes too. The Rolex Air Kings were very famous for having these numerals. And it's something that a lot of brands are bringing back. I think I made a video comparing my Smith's Everest to the Rolex 214270 Explorer. And in it, I uh, actually found the exact watch that kind of based its numerals around this approach. And you can see that there is a clear, if, you, if one of you out there is wearing an, an Explorer tonight, the, the modern, you know, the, the six digit references or the precursors in 36, you notice how similar your watch looks now with Loom inside it, that the numerals look pretty similar. So they did in fact bank on 50s and design elements. Um, of course, the 50s was this revival of, uh, of, of deco motifs. And here we have it, beautiful balance too. I mean, 
the, the subdial spacing and size. Longines, I've said this a couple of times, that Longines has the best catalog when it comes to just vintage inspirations. If you're on Instagram, look up Vintage Longines. He has a superb collection of pieces, modern and vintage, and he just he's a wealth of knowledge on the subject. Yeah, code 1159 typeface. It is cool, right, Megan? Um, and the rest of you, <laughs> six o'clock is cut off. It is Samurai, but I think, oh, wow, I just noticed. I thought it was just a horizontal baton, but it is, in fact, the six that has been sliced. I've never really understood why it was done this way and what the thinking was, but some watches do it better than others. I think we can agree. Uh, there's some examples out there that look great. Yeah, and whether you call it long jeans, like I'll put it in the chat, uh, long jeans or uh, long uh, jeans, kind of, you know, you can you can explain it however you want. I just typed it in the chat for you to ever read. So 1950s, beautiful Dauphine hands. And then we jump to 1961 and we see how it changed. And I hope I got these dates right. How nice is this? The next step is now we have engraved batons into the dial. So someone's taken a tool and actually engraved segmented batons inside there. Something you don't see at all today, this idea of a recessed faceted edge that's sharp and easy to look at. Another watch that understands balance, space, proportion, the, the lack of type on the dial definitely works in its favor. It's got an applied logo. Beautiful hands. I mean, these look like Asagai hands, actually. Yeah, it's stunning. Again, Longines has an amazing, just type, just go into Google, type in vintage Longines and have a look at the range of watches that they've made over the last God, 100 years. And you'll be so impressed by just the sheer, and that's why they can do so much in their reissue categories. They're, they're winning every single time with what they, they produce. Ta says, I like myself a pair of long jeans. Yeah, don't we all? Uh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, yeah, I love them. They are lots of fun. Just in the field watch segment, there's so much. The mil spec pieces, the big eyes, the, yeah, I could talk about it for ages. Um, they made so many watches between the, four, the, the 40s, basically the 30s to the 50s. It's just a huge category, category catalog. Celia Knuth, thank you for this. I, you're normally in the chat, so if you're watching, pleasure to share it. Um, yours was the last submission I saved, I think about an hour before the show. Right, great value. Yes, I agree, Rick, absolutely great value. Okay, so here we go. Let's have a look at the two. 50, 60. Quite a, quite a jump, quite a difference. Chaz from the Berg is next, and he sends in one of the best Zins out there. I featured this in a video in the past, and it is the Navi Timer, the Zin Navi Timer. Reference uh, 903. So it's the Zin 903 STBE. <laughs> it really rolls off the tongue. Uh, yeah, this, I'm trying to remember the story. It's, there's lots of legal issues around this piece, but it had to do with Zinn basically buying the Navi timer rights in a way to feature it in their watch. I think the owner of this watch will probably explain it better, but I love how this is, I mean, true to an original vintage Zinn Navi timer from back in the day. This is an approach that's very uh, true to form. So you have all the things that you can appreciate from a Navi timer, including just detail on the dial. So much of it. And uh, it's fun. I think we have a few more reissue chronos later on. Yeah, it's a gem. Like the accents too, the red accents, the blue. Should have mentioned the blue on the sleeve and the strap and everything works well. It's a really good shot, Chaz. Can, uh, can appreciate this immensely. Do you see how this theme seems to be working? Outlier watches? Yeah, these, these are all watches that are not conventional. It's pretty good. It's pretty fun. So Megan's saying she's going to start shopping more vintage Longines. I mean, yeah, it's there everywhere. I've been looking at some dirty dozen pieces and they are going for like two grand. It's not so expensive they're getting today. Um, speaking about text on dial. Yeah, this was actually brought up in the video. Um, some comments about this is just ridiculous. I find it the most hilarious that these were given to pilots and, you know, you're flying in those planes which had no sound deadening, nothing comfortable. And you're, if, if anyone has been in, you know, vintage cars or vintage planes, you know that your arm is shaking around like crazy whenever you're, you know, just, just the whole experience, your whole body is shaking like crazy. So to be able to read this watch while everything's going on and trying to use this to calculate your fuel time, <laughs> good luck. You've got to have a really good eyesight. I mean, 2020 is one thing, but this is just next level, you know. Uh, yeah, it's good fun. The 903, for anyone who's interested, these watches, I think you can still get them out there. I don't know if it was a limited release. So Zinn, okay, so Mason says, Zinn can't use the Navi Timer name. So the 903, 
So it's the 903 or the navigation chronograph. Okay. Well, they also call this the avigation chronograph. I see that word used a lot around these watches. You know, watches like the big eye, examples like that. They say avigation, as in aviation. That's quite a fun play on words. Aviation and navigation in one. Uh, miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Yeah. I mean, I always thought that using the tachymeter, they would be relatively the same if you're judging uh, a certain distance over a period of time. I, I don't understand how it works. It looks like one-tenth uh, ratios, and I've never looked up the instruction booklets. If I own one of these watches one day, I will learn. I will learn what it means, but uh, no. I'm, uh, it's still in production. That's good to know, Chaz. Thank you. Really nice batons, Thomas says. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I mean, Thomas would appreciate this because it has the pencil hands that he appreciates of the, uh, the plong palms. <clears throat> I'm going to have to hit some water. I'm losing my voice. It's not good when he's losing his voice at 50 minutes. He's only got like two hours and 50 minutes to go. Yeah, it's cool. Also, just like the contrast in colors, the white, the blue. Everything's easy to break up and read on the dial, which is nice. Um, okay. Okay. Awesome piece, Chaz. Thank you for this. And next, we are jumping to Chris, the first Chris. There's another Chris in a second. Doxa Sub. These guys are just nailing it. So this was, hold on a sec. It was his birthday on the 20th. So last weekend, it was his birthday, and this was the watch he picked up. I'm trying to remember if, that, if that's right. These pieces are making the rounds, and they're doing so, so well. I'm so chuffed. I need to get one in my collection, I think. What they have managed to do, revitalizing this, this piece and making the sizes wearable, usable, all the right elements that you want out of a Doxa, the right colors. I mean, we were chatting about the, the graph, well, not the graphite, the forged carbon version that came out a couple of weeks back. Yeah, there's so much, so much to enjoy. And type on dials, typeface. This I should have actually featured this in the video because this is such a nice example of a piece that understands a bit of asymmetry and balance can work side by side. I think the pole router dividing lines helps too. Pencil hands, the, the, the minute hand is thicker. Divers out there would appreciate that the pencil, the, the minute hand being bigger is easier to actually use functionally as an instrument, as a, as a gauge on a diving instrument. I hope I'm getting my words across. Oxygen deprivation is real. Mr. C, one dollar. It's good to have you here, Mr. C. <laughs> uh, it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, and Zach's saying avi timer. Yeah, I'm pretty. That's what they call avigation. Yeah, that's that's the word they like to use. <clears throat> um, I hope they mean nautical miles on the dial. I have absolutely no idea. Um, guess you never used a slide rule for calculating. I never did, Carl. Um, I was from the generation where calculators were starting to, you know, to get in. When I was in primary school, it was all, um, you know, paper, pen and paper. By the time you got to high school, good God, calculus and stuff with these damn scientific calculators. The best part is when you go into an exam and you have it set in the wrong setting, every single one of your answers will be wrong. And I've had you know friends getting naught on their final exams because every single answer was to the wrong decimal point. Completely, can you imagine? Completely screwing up your entire paper because of a failed calculator. And it happens. I mean, a lot of the time we would take two to three calculators into our exams just to be double sure that we have everything set correctly. It's just stupid. Giving a 17-year-old, 18-year-old a calculator of that complexity. Give us an abacus and let us just get on with it. <laughs> uh, James is in the chat. Welcome, James. Indoxination. Yes, I think this is the only one we're going to be seeing. Sadly, uh, some superb colors to these watches, though. I mean, yellows and oranges. And this is really nice and toned down, which I, I appreciate. Um, sometimes it's nice. I, what's also cool is seeing just how the white elements have been worked out here. Everything is, is the same color. That could be a bit difficult to read, uh, contrasting color-wise. You can't really break up the hands from the, the batons on the dial very easily, but it's subtle enough to be worn on a daily basis. And I think that's, that is awesome. Yeah, cool looking watch. Awesome shot too, Chris. Congratulations. I mean, happy birthday for last weekend. Uh, you shared the same birthday as my old man, so it was pretty good. Had a nice weekend there. And Robert is giving us specs on the one mile equals 1.6 kilometers. Really, <laughs> it is pretty hard to figure that out. Yeah, talk about decimal places and, and everything there. Yeah, and James mentioning Doxa Case, variety of colors, carbons. They're just moving from strength to strength. Uh, they, they're doing such a good job. Okay, to the next Chris, we know him as Flip and Zippo. And what did he say in the email to me? Something like bargain special that he picked, a steel, his, his steel, uh, as in S-T-E-A-L. And it is the Black Bay 41 Burgundy, right? This is the reference. You know, funny enough, I think this is the only Black Bay that we're going to have on the show. 
I'm just thinking to myself, this is the only, I think this might be the only Tudor we have on the show. How crazy is that? And some weeks we, we have like 50. So it's, it's all over the show. I'd be very interested in knowing uh, what drove you to pick this watch up, uh, Flip and Zippo, if you'd like to mention just a few words about, about this purchase. Um, as far as bargain hunting goes, this is an excellent example here because everyone's attention is on the 58s, uh, where the navy bezels like this and the burgundy bezels, just the standard black on black model, they are uh, doing so well. They're very easy to find and excellent value for money. Thank you for that, Mark. I see a super chat. Juan, thank you, as always, for the super chat, Juan. Absolute pleasure. I can't wait to feature your watches. There's one vintage reverso that we're going to look at that I think everyone is going to love. It is a gem. Um, lots of modern stuff from Juan this week, which is going to be fun too. So uh, <laughs> discount diver. Yes, it is. I've, that, that word is thrown around a lot. Um, is the Black Bay really an outlier? <laughs> Of course it is, Tower. Yeah. I mean, I can't get everything right. Uh, in, in this zone of outliers, we are definitely going to see uh, some watches that we know pretty well. This one kind of is, though, at this point. Think about it. The The social media space is just cluttered with, with the 58s and, you know, the chronographs and some more of the, you know, the 36s and the 41s have kind of been neglected in this zone. So actually, this is a pretty good example of a watch that is kind of, Outlier. And Valentin mentioning, aren't they thick? Yeah. That's my one gripe I have with most Tudors, actually, that their cases cases are a little bit uninspired and they are a little bit too tall for what they need to be. So um, it's all personal preference at the end of the day. I think the bonus is that you have a good amount of heft and presence on the wrist, which is always appreciated. And again, I think it's fantastic to get into a watch like this, such a good price, and to just enjoy it and use it as your daily wearer. I mean, it's, it's ideal especially now when all the attention is somewhere else. Um, let's see. So another another Otis, Juan says. Is it another Otis? Oh, I can't re I mem remember. I'll have to have a look at the submissions you sent. You sent in a lot, so I'm going to have to break it up. It's a, it's a Hamilton Reverso, and it's the best I've ever seen. I'll leave it at that. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, let's see. And Chaz, thank you for the super chat, man, really. It's, it's such a pleasure having you all here. I hope you're enjoying the, the talk so far. Okay, speaking of Reversos, what's coming up next? And I did miss you, uh, Chris, if you left a comment about this watch in the chat. Let me see if I can catch up and find you. Uh, no, he hasn't mentioned anything about it, but still, good pickup. Really good pickup for excellent price, too, I can imagine. Let's uh, hop on to Curtis's watch next. Oh, damn, I missed that. So, Curtis, we have chatted about often. He is, uh, industrial, he is a qualified industrial designer. He's a Marine. He's flown for years and years of his life. And he does love the, the specifics of his watches. He loves really focusing on those micro details. And uh, this is his Reverso. Megan was talking about Reversos a while ago. This is a Reverso Grand, I think, if I remember right. And he did. he actually did a bit of looking into how the Golden Ratio works. And it apparently this watch fits in the golden ratio perfectly 1.618 and you can see just how the dial works how it's been arranged you know with, with the rectangular forms it looks spot on actually i'm just this is the first time i'm examining this excuse the the quality of the, the image um probably from my end i probably screen grabbed this so look how these rectangles are all congruent they're all the same length and width that's kind of how the ratio would work Everything is balanced there. It's a, such a cool watch. The Reverso, I mean, it never gets old. And he has a feature of the, the Pantheon or the Parthenon. I can never get it right. Uh, so if anyone who would like to know a little bit about the calculation, I'll leave it here for you in a second. While I jump to the chat and get back in, Rick, thank you for the super chat. And Chaz, again, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, and he says, uh, thanks for the hard work. This isn't hard work. This is fun. I mean, being able to sit back for three, four hours and just chat watches, such a great way to hang out. Russell, actually, if he's still in the chat with us, Russell said that you don't know how much um, levity you've brought to the community during what's been going on in the world over the last couple of months. So, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, it's, it's good fun. This hobby always manages to keep us involved and entertained. And with stuff like this, I mean, it's a learning, it's a school day every day. Parthenon, Demetrius would know. I mean, he lives here. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Demetrius. The Parthenon. And uh, check it out. We get to appreciate the movement at the back. 19 joules. I don't know the power reserve of this model, but it is, uh, yeah, it's a gem. The Reverso is 
I, I've said this lots of times that it's it's such a pleasure to see a watch that literally goes from the bog standard manual wind, uh, no no complexity, just simple time telling all the way up to a duo, duo face with multiple complications, even chronographs. They do it all, and it's it's contained in one watch, one style. That's that's watchmaking in in the purest sense. When you don't have to manipulate the the actual case to you know. Um, fit the complication that's when you know you've you've worked yourself around the problem you know you've you've done a lot more problem solving and yeah it's just great i love it absolutely love it curtis thank you if you're in the chat if you're watching this later on it's an absolute pleasure next we have clive or the rancher um he sent this to me a while back and i couldn't save the high res photo but i tried and it's a really cool watch hamilton countdown chronomatic I've never seen one of these before, but I mean, I, I know lots in the chat will appreciate it. If Orange Hand is there, if Thomas is there, this looks like the X33 that you love, Thomas. I mean, look at that case. It's exact. But the highlights, the accents, everything works. I, I mean, I don't even understand how this, it actually has a world time complication to it, as well as, I don't know if it's a flyback, but look at the balance there and, and the complexity it offers in such a fairly simple looking watch. It's kind of like the evolution of the Navi timer in a way. Hamilton was doing some amazing stuff through the 70s, through the 60s. Um, and you're going to see another superb example of a reverser later on. It does look good, hey, Thomas. How modern does this watch look too? Close your eyes and think. It doesn't feel like a watch from the 70s. This looks like, you know, 2001, a space odyssey, but also kind of timeless. I like it. I really do. I wanted to spend quite a bit of time talking about this because it has all the balance you want. All the highlights, the accents. Technically, it's a reverse. What would they call it? <clears throat> the, uh, they call it. A they don't call it a tropical dial. They call it a exotic. It's got an exotic dial. What we would expect to see from uh, the Paul Newmans of, you know, the six two three nine era. I'm, I'm going to botch the references, but you know what I mean. The, the way the dial is is black with the red accents here on the sides. They call it the uh, the exotic dial model, and this is what it adopts. Great colors. Great use of lines. It's a nice piece. Right, let's catch up with the chat. I've got to scroll up a bit and see what's going on. Uh, the Parthenon, I'm good. And, and Russell is in the chat. That's good. Uh, oh, no. Sam Ray said no voice. Does that mean, oh, God, someone else needs to complain, and then I might have to do a double check. Curtis says, I do believe that all the reversos with display case backs have been discontinued. You would know more than me, Curtis. You would know. Um, watching World Finance, thank you for the super chat. Keep up the great videos. That's a pleasure. These 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 discussions are good. And it's all just about time management, A, and keeping myself interested. I mean, that's the worst thing. I, I don't want to be the rinse and repeat guy out there who's just talking about three brands. I, I do want to make sure that as long as the, the channel is peppered with interesting talking points and, and everything in between, It'll keep me interested and engaged. So uh, it's the joy. What a cool looking watch. I love the case design too. Kai, this is a beast. It really is a beast. And funny, we're jumping to another chrono next, which is kind of similar, kind of different. And it's an Ebel chronograph. Check this out. Uh oh, wrong one. Ebel automatic. This comes in from Dan the Watchman. Sorry, it's my uh, Magic Mouse's time of the month. Sometimes uh, she has a mind of her own. Uh, Henry Jekyll. That's good to have you here, Henry Jekyll. Um, Greenwich on the dial. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm missing you all in the chat again. Sorry, everyone. Um, and James says that Hamilton, my wife picked up in LA. Fantastic watch. Yeah, I mean, there's in the vintage category especially, there's so much there too. Urenson saying that the 2001 Space Odyssey, love that movie. Oh, I, I enjoy them, man. I You get so invested in, in you know, the Kubrick films and... Just sitting back and taking it all in, it's its a spectacle. I actually watched, um, what's that film called now? Dunkirk. <laughs> I watched Dunkirk the other day, the, the whole uh, Nolan film. And what I found fascinating about it is it's not a film that's driven by plot. It's very much a film for film's sake. And it's such a good thing to talk about, to think about there, that you're literally going in to watch the spectacle. And it truly is a spectacle of practical effects, of all of that. You can just enjoy how accurate it is. Of course, it's nice to see a Weems Omega in there too, you know? Uh, it's it's fun. Some some movies really do understand what they're trying to do here. Uh, John, super chat again. Thank you. John, we were the, we were the group who helped you pick up your Zen, right? Um, that was a good time. 
is the golden rule applicable for all types of watch products designs? Um, are there objects where it does not quite work as well? Uh, I'm definitely not an expert in the zone. You would think I am, but I am far from expert when it comes to it. Um, there are people who study the golden ratio by itself. And, you know, technically we can theoretically say that virtually everything falls into the golden ratio in one way or another. That's, that's the supposed theme. Following how nature works, uh, that's why people say nature is perfect and because everything seems to balance and, and follow that same kind of organic function. We look at this watch, for example, and we can see how everything is balanced and broken up. We might not be able to draw the lines through it as we would expect to see it, but technically this watch falls into the golden ratio. And it's all about the rule of thirds. That's how I like to see it. The rule of thirds basically denotes how areas are divided up. And you see on most products and objects that there is generally two thirds of something and then a third of something else. And that balance, um, that offsetting is what makes something appealing. You might find it very often on my thumbnails that I feature in videos that I use the rule of thirds where I, I, I place the watch off center and stuff like that. It just helps, it's, it's, more, it's, it's more appealing to the eye, basically. It's, it's more ribble. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, it's a cool looking watch though. This is Ibel, let's chat about it for a sec. Uh, Dun Dunkirk, great cinematography. Yep, keep the diversity flowing. <laughs> so, yeah, I sure will, Mark. I mean, that's that's the the joy, the goal. So this Ebel Chrono, I love the the patina. Great balance. Notice how it has screws around the bezel. I mean, it's I don't know where this watch came from exactly. What what time? Um, if it was from the eighties or the seventies ish. I like how the numerals are not cut out, Samurai. I mean, that's good, right? Yeah, some watches understand it, and this is actually just down to. Um, I would say better thought that went into the process of developing this watch. They knew where the subdials were replaced and they, they plotted the numerals accordingly instead of the other way around where they just threw the subdials in last minute and had to sacrifice numerals. It's a catch 22 because the balance could also make it very difficult to read at a glance. You might be surprised. I mean, talking about the rule of thirds, breaking up numerals, uh, that that less amount of symmetry actually makes it easier to read at a glance instead of seeing balance your eye your eye appreciates balance but when it comes to you know uh, i don't know if it makes any sense but uh, maybe we can pinpoint a few watches later on all right uh let's see mama's hamilton new version yeah so have they actually recreated that watch i did not know that there's so much i mean again this hobby is just a rabbit hole that gets deeper and deeper and let's get another shot of this piece up off angle wow thank you magic mouse you're a gem it's a cool looking piece. I mean, we talk about type 20 and that arrangement. This this is pretty much the type 20 dial that we know. It's not a bi-compax, but the numerals are all there. I think there's a serif on the seven. Uh, you've got gorgeous little overhanging serifs on all the numerals. The patina is very clean. Yeah, Dan the Watchman. I still have a folder of watches that you sent in a while ago that I haven't featured. I think I deserve some wine. Let's uh, get into it. Fruit punch, fruit punch, I should say. All right, what else is going on here? Uh, Ebel produces some good watches. Yeah, vintage finds. Again, outliers. Another good example here. 90s, Dan says. Good to have you in the chat, Dan. So this is from the 90s. It's amazing, right? It looks like a watch. You can't actually place its time very clearly. Okay, so the AVI, yes. Uh, Brent says that the 765 reissue, the re-edition, I would love that. That's a Breitling. We have actually featured one before. I've done a video on it too. Okay, this is fun. Next, we're jumping to quite a hectic watch, to say the least. This is from David and Kerry, and it is a Moser Endeavor Perpetual. Uh, and the, the funniest thing is that when I saw this photo of this dog, anyone who knows their dogs might instantly jump on and think, call it a, a Bernese Mountain Dog. My favorite dog, my favorite breed of dog. So, you know, first ahead of the golden retriever. Those two breeds are my absolute favorite. The Bernese mountain dog is just, you know, turns out it's not, she's an Australian shepherd. So I botched that one and I, I sent him a whole spiel saying how I love Bernese mountain dogs. And, you know, anyway, it's, it's good. Let's uh, catch up with the chat again. Curtis is saying some so-called experts dismiss the golden ratio as nonsense. <laughs> Personally disagree, but an item has been designed to incorporate this principle to be balanced. Yeah. I mean, there's, that's, that's just, what would you call it? Naivety? You can't dismiss that stuff. It's mathematics in the purest sense. I mean, just try and just try and understand how buildings were made in you know the Roman, the ancient Roman, ancient Greek times. 
and the, the pyramids, virtually everything was based along that scale. And this is not something that was just thought up over a weekend. It's time immemorial, you know, cubits and, and the whole, you know, thought of measuring measurements, spacing, balance, asymmetry, offsetting. Here's another good example in a way we could say when you look at how this watch is presented. Um, what is that tiny hand, a GMT Samurai? You know, I, I hate to admit this, but I don't actually know. I don't know. I think it's to, it's a perpetual, and I think it has to do with the month. It does. Okay. I'm looking at the dial. January, February, March. This little hand points to March, and it being March the 20th, that's how it works. And it's got a power reserve at the side here. It's got sub-seconds. Got to love a good Fume dial. Moser Endeavor. Moser knows how to do their dials. I can't believe I guessed that. So that is to do with the actual month, because there's 12, 12 uh, markers on the dial. That was a good guess. The alcohol is obviously working. Um, right, catching up with everyone in the chat. Sorry that I'm missing you here. Again, tag me in the chat and we can we can get talking as we do. Um, it's the month hand. Yeah, it's good. It's a little bit small. I, I got to say, I mean, if, if there's one critique, it's tiny. It's like, you know, you have to you know, focus in on one eye to try and get it there. But script on dials, not many brands do it as well as Moza. And, you know, again, referring back to the idea of typeface and how it works on a dial, some can really make or break a watch. And here's an example of a piece that truly understands less is more. You don't need to tell everyone that it's superlative, that it's horterology. It's got it all there. Got it all there. Yeah, superb. Next up, though, this is what I like about his collection. He sent in three watches. The next he sent was a Zin 836. And like I said in the beginning, we not just have we have a couple of Zins featured on the show. Outliers, watches that do stand uh, in a different category by themselves. And this is a just a superb working watch, don't you think? Clean, uncluttered, contrast, red accents. It's what it's what you need. I can't wait to get to that U50. I guarantee you that after seeing this watch when it's presented to you. I think there's going to be a couple of sales because it's that good. It looks just the business. You'll you'll see what I mean when we get there. It's on a NATO strap. Just oh, it looks so nice. It's actually pointing to February. B Dev says you're kidding me. Is it the third month? Y you're right because this is December. Uh oh. Well, David, if you're if you're watching, I think he does say he likes watching in the wings. If you are watching, David. Technically, this hand should be pointing at the third marker. <laughs> That's a very good point. Well done. This is what I love about having an audience. Thank you for that BDEV. Thank you for that BDEV. That is great. Uh, I love it. I love it. This hobby of ours, you know? So technically 12 is December. That's that's good fun. That's the that's one of the issues of having something that is so restrictive, so restrained, should I say. You know, elements removed from a dial where it doesn't indicate those factors. You can miss a few things. That's an example. So what can you actually fault with this piece, really? We talk about type on dial. There's no, there's no uh, elements that really stand out. The date window has been framed nicely. It's out of the way. It's, it's there when you want it. It's at the six. It's clean. Yeah. Zen, Zen knows what they're doing. On one hand, you could say it's too simple of a watch. And I, I would fully agree with you there. Um, but it is also a watch that sums up mil spec, sums up the German way, very uh, field focused, uh, built for purpose, built for use. He couldn't resist. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on in the chat, but Hans and Eric always have a good time uh, chatting away in the, in the descriptions here. So let's carry on. Mason says that uh, Moser is one of the best perpetual calendar designs, so clean. Everyone else's perpetuals load up the subdials. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing. I'm not so much of a fan of perpetuals that really brag about it. Um, there's some watches that definitely do it better than others. Um, the, the whole complication is not something that appeals to me. That's personal preference. I, I like my watches as clean as possible, but for a lot of people out there, I think there's something to look into in that area. Shy Town is joining us. Whew, welcome, Shy Town. Yeah, it's an awesome watch, right? Uh, it's a Zin, Raymond says. <laughs> Truly is. This watch is a Zin in the purest sense. Moving to the last watch, I think some will appreciate this. Patek 5107. Such an underrated piece. Uh, these I don't know why these these Calatravas get such a bash for the way the the lugs and the the crown guards work. I think it's stunning. I really think it's stunning. It's actually one of my favorites um, because you think back to the 30s when these watches were introduced re realistically, and the whole deco motif. It just feels like a Rococo deco kind of period. 
everything's flowing smoothly. There's there's no breaks anywhere, and they're just you know free flowing from from the edge of the lug to the crown guard. It's just clean, organic, smooth. The window of the date is framed. Big big marks there. Huge bonus points. I think all of these hobnails are applied to the dial too. Yeah, this is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, I actually prefer it to the more modernized. Also, just simple things like the bezel is is thicker, you know, so it takes up more of that space. The dial is not white. It's actually eggshell in finish. It's good. See, we're still talking about the outliers. A lot of fun. Hitting the fruit punch again. Again, for anyone out there who wants to know, it's the Patek 5107. Another watch that understands its typeface. Handset. It's just, it's just great. Um, you, you, what can you say wrong about these pieces? Uh, I guess the movements are a bit peculiar. None of these movements hack, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, at least it has 60 plots and not 57. Oh, hold on. Technically, it doesn't. Are we talking about just this? That's a good point, Megan. So you know, it doesn't have any plots here around yet. But uh, yeah, I got to admit. It's you can't fault these pieces. One one thing that I love the most about them, and what kind of has become the staple of the the Calatrava line, is just how these batons have been done. Every single edge is faceted and sharp, and light play is there. And depending on the angle where you hold it, you can just, you know, it's it's just an experience being able to enjoy how the light works on it. A lot of fun. Uh, understated, yeah. This is a bit peculiar though. I I think this watch was made during the time of the Geneva seal because we have a Swiss print and then we have Geneva at the top. I don't know if that has to do with with that arrangement. Someone might need to someone might need to tell me. As far as I know, a lot of these watches don't have Swiss on them. Again, I'm not much of a Patek follower, but uh yeah, I do really appreciate the way the Rococo format's done, very deco, stunning. David, awesome watches you sent in. And I'm missing you all in the chat. Let's see what's going on. Um See, Shaitan says, Patek Philippe Gold has thus subtle warmth to it. Yeah, not cartoonish like some Rolex Gold tones can be. And it's all to do with balance, you know? It's all to do with balance. Um, understanding how much copper you're going to add or, you know, just those, those ratios and those proportions. Some watches do go way over the top, just in the rose gold category too. Um, I think when I think AP rose gold, I find it to be very copper. In, in finish, you know, Rolex has done rose gold very well, but then it's yellow gold is super bright and flashy. So it's something really important to look into before picking up the watch, just getting it in hand and seeing if the colors actually match what you want. So yeah, also remember that I think these oxidize over time. So this watch being a little bit older, like a 2000s watch, yeah, it's, it's a gem. It really is awesome. To David B next. And this, this is fun. I have been eyeing this watch for a very long time. And I think he just picked this up. And he said to me in the email that he prefers it to the standard, <laughs> call me a heretic, but I prefer this to the standard moon watch. And uh, I like that line. No, I understand where you're coming from. This <laughs> this comes from a guy who owns the, uh, you know, the same watch, essentially the same lugs. So you're not alone. <laughs> um, it's, it's such a cool machine based on the CK2998, I think. And funny, we're going to be having a look at two Speedmasters in tandem now. We're going to have a look at this and then the new 3861 Professional. Uh, J J just Joseph saying, thanks for showing the Blancpain. Oh, pleasure. Absolute pleasure. It's one of my favorites. I absolutely adore it. Let me get back to it quick, pull it up for a sec. This piece is just such a win. They do have examples of these without the date, which is the one I would prefer if it was me. So cool. Outlier. Again, the theme of the show is consistent for once, surprisingly. So what to say about this piece? Uh, the issue with it, I'm sure most of us know, is that the handset is not the most legible. Same you know, when you look at the running seconds, the hour and minute hands are very polished and reflective, so that can affect readability. That's technically why they were removed for the professional hands, just the painted stick hands instead. Um, the sapphire sandwich is a love it or hate it thing. You can see the milky ring that runs around it. But then you get all the cool little quirks about this watch, like the applied logo. Uh, you get the, the gorgeous case without the crown guards that we could say are kind of unnecessary on this watch. It's not like you're going to go rock climbing with it unless you're very brave. Uh, suits the strap, Eric. Yeah, I agree fully. I mean, this watch, 
I think next to the professional, this watch is probably even more of a strap monster. This one would probably wear leather a lot better, where the, the modern Speedmaster would probably be able to take NATOs a bit more, maybe. I'm just uh, taking a wild guess. But leather on this watch is, is a win, absolute win. Okay, catching up with the chat. Again, tag me if you want to get my attention. There's lots of debate going on. <laughs> so so Doug UK says, oh, I just bought a moon watch. Yeah, I mean, it's it's to each their own preferences, really. Uh, you can't fault one for the other. This, what I love, is the whole, again, I've said this hundreds of times, the developmental prototype, first Omega in space. You know, this one didn't have any real application behind it. It was the racing chronograph that then evolved into the, the modern piece that we know today. Uh, Whoops. Oh, no. What is going on? My magic mouse. What have you done? <laughs> Come back. <laughs> there we go. We're back. Uh, yeah. What else can I say about it? I could just gush about the, the old school cases for days. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. And we're going to move next to a modern watch. Thanks to Dear Artifact and his dad for featuring this. Uh, Chaz is asking, is this the reduced speedy? No, it's not. This is 39 mils in size, I think. And they have been discontinued. As far as I know, I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's lots of good examples of the CK2998 out there for you to look at. They have some really cool pieces. The reverse panda dial, the blue dial model. Yeah, you can go to town. It's so one thing that Omega does is they like their limited editions, but they also like diversity within the lines of watches that they make. So would recommend. To Dear Artifact next, the king of photography in this zone. These images are like 50 megabytes each, right? And here we go, the Star Child, the watch that really broke the, the internet at the beginning of this year. The new 3861 Speedmaster Professional. This is the Hesalite model. First time I've noticed. Hesalite model. So you don't have the applied logo. You have a plastic crystal. You don't have a clear case back. And it's just awesome. There's a few of us in the chat who have picked up these new models. The, the Sapphire Sandwich, I think, has been the most popular because you want to enjoy that movement. But then if you don't, so what, what this watch has managed to do well, you know, the whole idea of coaxial technology has pushed this watch a step forward when it comes to accuracy, when it comes to service intervals. That's been the whole idea. And in the video that I did, you know, discussing this piece, I love how they have just added more nuance to the piece. I've said this hundreds of times, but, you know, the dot over 90, the, the recessed stepping to the dial, the, the old school bracelets, love it or hate it. It's very 80s, very 90s. Um, They've just added more quirks to the watch that allows it to be less cookie cutter feeling for the owner. You know, <laughs> Father Art is he in the chat? That's awesome, dear Artifact. So Father Artifact is watching. <laughs> uh, welcome, Father Artifact. We love your watch. Um, so the size and the scale of this piece is virtually the same as the original, the three eight six one, and the eight six one. Basically, right? There hasn't been much change there, but they've done a few adjustments. Like the crown is a little bit uh, longer, um, and just a few other things, like the pusher is not as snappy. That's also a lovers or hated thing. Just a few quirks. And there's been lots of talk about the watch's bracelet not being finished well enough, and it's very sharp, very manufactured feeling. I would definitely love to get this watch in hand to experience it. Um, I know that lots of modern Omegas tend to have that problem where they don't, they, they're a little bit sharp underneath. So I'd like to experience that firsthand. But what an amazing photo. I haven't even zoomed in onto it where you want to see. It's just clarity for days. I mean, not done yet. So this watch really did break break the news uh, January. Literally the first week of January, I think it came out. Hell of a start to a year, don't you think? Uh, then there was a cool shot of an Oban 14 with the Speedmaster. We get to see light play and, uh-oh, uh come back. No, I should have left that. Sorry. Close your eyes. Um, these dear artifact just takes such incredible photographs. You can just sit here for days and just pre just drink it in. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, what else is going on in the chat? Let's see. Chai Tom, I really like the presidential star bracelet. Yeah, I mean, it is cool. For someone who owns the, you could say, the three-link bracelets, I would most definitely get this watch because of the different style bracelet. Very Jubilee-esque, comfortable as, as hell. Um, few other complaints about how the clasp works. And it's a pity that they didn't incorporate a micro adjust like they have with the Seamasters. But um, look at how awesome the Plexi is on this piece. That's, that's what you want to enjoy. So I guess this is the purist's model. Um, but at the same time, I think a, losing a Sapphire case back is quite a deal breaker for me, at least, because these movements are beautiful. 
And I mean, you want to appreciate it. An automatic column wheel chronograph movement is never, and a coaxial as well, it's never anything to scoff at. Isn't it cool to see that Omega is also reducing the thickness of their watches? Again, they're actually, you know, the technology is good enough that they can put the rotors and everything in and still have it. Hold on a second. Am I getting this right? Is this, this is a manual wind. Wake up, dude. This is a manual wind. Okay. Sorry. For, uh, omit what I just said a second ago. And then we get the money shot where we can see everything from the texture on the dial to Dear Artifacts fingerprints. So if anyone wants to scan, <laughs> scan his fingerprints, you can do it. The quality of this shot is, it's every time I get these in, I, I say to myself, I cannot, cannot use this as the cover photo. No, I have to choose someone else. Because I mean, they're just they're so ideal for cover photos. If you don't, why well, don't haven't I mentioned this? Get into Instagram right now and follow Dear Artifact. Anyone out there, I've said this about a million times running these shows. He has such an interesting collection, very similar to mine, actually, when it comes to you know, tool-focused and uh, monotone. But his photography is second to none, always. So yeah, there it is. Professional Hesselite. It's the way. Let's see what else is going on in the chat here. Uh, amazing photos. Random Rob is in the chat. Welcome, Random Rob. I love watching your clips, listening to your takes on pieces, inspired. It's so much fun. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Uh, see, Megan mentioned your artifact produces art. He does art, not photographs. He just knows his lighting. I feel like this is all just natural light, but he just has this room in the house somewhere where everything just works perfectly every day. <laughs> uh, just my thoughts. The bracelet may be a little sharp from what I've heard, but I have the Royal Oak and, and though not sharp, you can feel the edges. Yeah. And it's meant to be that way. I agree. I mean, that is one, one example of a watch. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all down to comfortability and how it fits on the wrist, how it feels on your wrist. The good thing is this watch is not very heavy, right? Because the bracelet is kind of, you know, no, let me get a better shot. Let's get the side profile again because the watches that the bracelet itself is not all that it's all solid, but it doesn't feel very solid from what I've heard. It's kind of jingly jangly. The beauty is that when it's when it weighs less, it means that the watch is not going to dig into your wrist as much, right? So there is quite a nice balance there where it's lighter on the wrist, meaning that you're not going to get as much contact with the bracelet as you would with something that's a bit heavier, which is a complaint that I think a couple of people have had with, with APs, like the, the offshore bricks, uh, for example. Yeah. What else can I say? I've been chatting about this damn watch for weeks now. Um, so, and, and Dear Artifacts mentioning his, ca his camera is a Canon EOS 6D natural light. Uh, Sam Ray says, I feel like Omega will come out with a Mars watch. They'd be fools not to. That's going to be something. Um, watching World Finance, just poured myself some, some Blankton's bourbon while watching. Sent you a pic now. Thank you, Watching World Finance. We'll feature it next week. <laughs> Uh, can we have a wristwatch check? Shaitan asks in the chat if anyone would like to share what they're wearing. Right, dear Artifact, we have gushed about this watch now for like 15 minutes. Beautiful photography. For anyone who wants to appreciate the macro shots and details, check out dear Artifact for more because he is on the money. He's done some good stuff here. Yeah, I really dig it. I can't wait. I really hope I get the chance to get one of these in hand and enjoy. Are there still waiting lists for these? I don't know. I don't know. Rick on Watcher says, speedies are not underrated, but maybe a little, a bit underappreciated. Ooh, I wouldn't say so, Rick. These watches are by far, they're one of the top 10 most appreciated watches, I think, in this hobby. They, everyone knows what it is. And uh, from an owner's perspective, virtually everyone I know owns one. <laughs> it's, it's just a part of the, you know, a part of the trait. You get it. You get a Black Bear 58, you get a Speedmaster. That's just like the rules. Um, that's funny. That's really funny. Dear Artifact, thank you. To Dr. Bob next. Now, how's that? Another swatch. We have featured quite a cool set of watches from Dr. Bob in the past, from Submariners to Patek Nautiluses, Nautilize, and Aqu Aquanauts, and the whole jam. This week, no wasting list at all, Mark. Is that so? Okay. I guess one of the biggest gripes is the price of the Speedmaster that I'm not so much of a fan of. I think you know, five plus thousand pounds for a Speedmaster, when they were going for like three a little while ago, that's one hell of a price hike. So that's quite a pull you have to swallow when getting it. Um, but then you are paying for the movement, I guess, at the end of the day. So we have a cast. This is not the only Cassie Oak that we're going to be seeing. I've been looking at these watches a lot lately. I love the gray out, the, the gray version, gray dial, gray, gray, everything. It's so clean. And his wife is wearing a swatch mint. Hold on. 
let's see what it is a swatch mint flavor <laughs> if that's actually the term i think that's that is so cool and here we go you don't have to be an owner of high horology and not get a kick out of this hobby this is an example of, of two watches that are electronic basically essentially um but they they do sum up i mean you got swatch and you got casio basically two rivals if you think back in time working together i love what they've done with these these new casios i think the uh, the analog layout is something that really speaks to me um something to consider in future i think uh, let's see what else is going on mark says 10 percent discount on offer as well 10 percent discount still on five grand that's 500 that's pretty good still it's it's a hell of a price uh Maybe it's just me, me and my my very min bank account is saying that. But uh, yeah, it's it's cool. I look forward to seeing where the Speedmaster goes over the next few months. Yeah, missing you all in the chat. There's, there's all sorts going on. Anyway, carrying on with the Cassie Oak. Um, so Chaz says the Cassie Oak is as close as I'll get to a Royal Oak. Yeah, you and me both. Um, unfortunately, the market is just you know scarce and. Can talk about we're going to be having a look at a royal oak later on so that should be fun um can recommend the cassie oaks i think dr bob yes oh he's in the chat that's cool dr bob this is your shot but also random rob i think random rob has about a trillion of these in his collection so uh he's also watching with us yeah it's cool gonna jump next to dylan known as 121 click bezel and he loves his shots in low light and he loves his pilot watches. He has a selection of very interesting pieces that are most definitely outliers in this, this zone, this category. And here we go, the Air King. I think most of us can probably agree that this watch is going to be discontinued any day now. It's, I mean, keep your eye on the Rolex website. I guarantee this watch is going to disappear. Um, speaking of which, next week I'm putting a Rolex clip out, more designs. And I do some funky things with the Air King on an Explorer 2. That was a good lot of fun. Uh, Brent says, amazing photo of this. Yeah, it's good, right? Watching World Finance says the same. So ultraviolet light by the looks of things. What it does, you can really appreciate, is the green and the yellow, how it kicks out that in the light. Yeah, it's a cool watch. I'm, I'm starting to really enjoy it. As most of us know, these outliers are the ones that are going to get the traction and the attention once they're discontinued. Um, oh, come on, Magic Mouse. It is so uh, so temperamental. I really have to fork out a grand to get another one. I don't know how much they cost. Hitting the, the Shiraz fruit punch again. I think wine was a good call, actually, because I'm not, not hammered enough. So what I'm saying kind of makes sense for a change, which is good. Is Ziraha leaving us? Oh, we're going to be featuring your, featuring your is it a, um, it's not a rotary, it's a Roma. We'll be featuring that later. Uh, I need to say an early goodbye again since I need to wake up. No, don't worry about it. It's been a pleasure having you here, really. Everyone who's joined, who's been a part of the show, who's sent in their watches, makes it the fun experience for all of us here. Shaitan says, I enjoy any digi watches, especially with no ticking seconds hands. Mm. Speak in my language there, man. Speak in my language. Something about me and Quartz watches. I get this strange tick. You know, I start twitching when I see that Quartz hand, you know, ticking away even if it's a geophysic even if it's a mechanical watch there's something strange about my brain and, and ticking hands um, everyone who wants a full rolex connect, uh, collection needs to have an air king it's really cool i mean i agree megan the air king again what i hope is that the air king does get some love does actually get some attention put on it um because it has one of the best histories actually one of the best histories in rolex's category uh, watches provided to the raf in the 50s and they just disappeared They've just really gone under the radar. I guarantee you, if they wanted to make this watch popular, they could do an OP41 release like they did last year and just nail it. And this watch would fly. It would fly, pun intended. Moving next to the IWC Pilot Chrono. I'm going to flip around. Another really outstanding outlier in this category here. And what I've noticed with a lot of IWCs, let me try and get you in the chat. Hold on a sec. I'm missing you guys. I've got to remember that there's chats going on as I'm talking. Uh, let's see. Great capture, dear, dear Art. If, if you get a, a good comment like this from Dear Artifact, you know you're doing well, Dylan. So if you're still with us in the chat, great capture. Uh, and Chaitan says, you're pointing out the one o'clock marker ruined the Air King for me. <laughs> I know. I know. Sorry. Sorry. That's the... Uh, We've spoken about it so many times. That's the real issue, that gap there and how it doesn't balance. 
you just need to put a naught there. Don't worry, I remedy it in the in the redesign video that you'll see <laughs> that you'll see next week. Uh, but that's one of the gripes, and it definitely does when you start looking at that, talking about golden ratios and printing on dials and all that BS earlier. Yeah, it's not the best example of that, right? And balance. So I was going to say I um, lost my train of thought a second ago. What I have really appreciated when I looked at these IWCs, everything from the Spitfires to the, the standard field watches, is how they follow through with serifs on their numerals. You know, the ones have these hooks to them. And just that small adjustment can make such a difference, similar to the seven. No, it's not just the ones. I was looking at, it, wasn't, it was like a Mark 15 or a Mark 14 or whatever the hell. And they all have that same idea of just some extra detail. And these are applied too. How often do you see applied numerals like this on a, on a dial? This is pretty much IWC's bread and butter in this category. Pilot Chrono, another great shot. It's a sector dial that's got so much going on. It's a, it's a panda dial too. There's, there's lots. Scotty beam me up. Yep, I agree, Megan. Uh, anyone else in the chat? Let's see. These applied indices are nice. Yes, for sure, Chaz. Um, wait a sec. Eric, I th are you and Hans just having a, a sinking steps? Oh, God, you guys. You guys are the best. Um, uh, Zulu Diver Premium. I don't know what is going on in the chat there. Between Hans and Eric, they, they are a comedy sketch in themselves. Oh, and funny enough, we're jumping to Eric right now. Uh, let's have a look. Now, I don't know what happened here, Eric, if you, if you were submerged or if this was shutter speed or if this was... But I think you said in your, your email to me that, by the way, it's very bright. Uh, put sunglasses on or something. Uh, Bellin Ross Diver, he says, just another diver. How can I adjust the brightness of this? Let's try. Hold on a sec. I really hope I don't crash the page. Bear with me. Let's see. Contrast, exposure. No, that won't do it. No, hold on. Hold on. No, that won't do it either. Highlights, if I remove... No. I'm trying my best here. Just... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. I jinxed it, didn't I? Damn it. Okay. Bear with me, people. We have a serious problem here, Houston. Japers. So that means that the order of this presentation is now gone to pot. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. This has been quite a nightmare of a show, uh, format-wise. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's try and fix this quickly. Uh, hold on, bear with me for a second. <laughs> it's good to be experimental in life. Uh, always show sidebar. Right. We can fix this. The trick is to just keep on. So we've looked at the tellurium. We've looked at the Yemma, Chaz from the Berg. We've looked at Juzin, have looked at that. We've looked at that, the diver. <sighs> Damn it. Okay, let's jump to Nico next. <laughs> Start again. I'm not going to read the chat. I need to fix this. Okay, sorry, Eric. Your Belladross diver is now going to be put. This is the Squale moment we're having again. Um, we're going to jump to Nico next. Uh, it's a nice watch. Can't see it very well. Avert your eyes if you're having a problem. Uh, restore to previous backup. <laughs> uh, we're jumping to Nico, and let's just let's try and remedy the situation by looking at the Zen U50. Now, Nico is known as Urenson uh, 1986. Sorry about that, uh, Eric. Your watch broke preview. <laughs> Megan says everyone has gone and left bed. Thank you. Thank you. Mark says, every Eric, tell a joke. That's good. I mean, that's the joy of these shows. Now you can understand just what happens behind the scenes because this happens more often than you would think. Too many wines. Uh, that was good. You notice that huge pause I had between the, the actual end and the oh no? Yeah. So don't worry. I'll, I'll work out a way of getting this right now. U50, great watch, great shot. Let's get back on track. This one, I think, is going to get a lot more <laughs> attention now that it's, it's been featured. Uh, on the NATO strap too. Again, Nico, you've absolutely nailed this piece. It looks, it looks like such a gem. Uh, the color contrast. This is one of my favorite divers in the Zen line. The UB40, yeah, red, red one, right? Yeah, that was the that was the reason why I completely botched this, uh, this presentation. That's all good. It's all good. So, it's a cool piece, though. Yeah, Sam Ray says eleven millimeters in height. I did not know that. Um, if you want to appreciate this watch, just pull it up online and have a good look at what they've done here. This one is tegumented steel, I think, with a PVD coating and 
so many little factors to enjoy it. Orange accents. Again, this this Zulu strap works perfectly on it too. And it's just one of the greats. The, the shot is superb as well. God, that's so funny. That's so funny that that happened. I mean, we've really gone from strength to strength. I guess this is what happens when you've been away from the show for such a long time that, you know, uh, shit happens. So Forbin says, someone PVD'd that submarine steel. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. Tegumented steel, I think, is in as the only brand that does it. And it really just adds so much more hardness to it. It's one of the things I didn't specify. I'll have to in the in another material-based video later on. Such a cool piece though. Balance, space, proportion, symmetry, yeah. And Megan says, I need that watch in my life. I do too. Uh, I think as a watch that resembles the 1980s, let's uh, try and get this better on the screen here. <laughs> I'm really having a hard time today. Uh, a watch that resembles the 1980s with the square markers and everything there. It's so specific to this this era, this timeline. And Uren Zun, the owner of this piece, he says he loves it. Yep, can't disagree. It's a great everyday wearer, sports, built for utility, built for work. Um, Hans says you should do one at least every fortnight. Talking about these shows. Yeah, I agree. I do need to get back into it. Okay, let's carry on now. So the names are going to be a bit jumbled for the rest of the show, but we'll get to your submissions. Don't worry. You're not going to miss you. Um, let's go to some vintage stuff next from Jonah. How cool is this? This is one of my favorite submissions. Oh. Now, these are both Vietnam era issued watches. Let's just enjoy this for a sec. Don't worry. I am I'm pretty observant with the with the watches that come up. I will most definitely find your pieces eventually. We'll get we'll get there <laughs> uh, as the show goes. Sorry about that bit of delay. Um Zen only put DLC on Tegumented Metals. Really did not know that. Um getting back into the chat now. Let's see what else is going on here. Um not much. That's a good thing. I can focus more on the specs. Again, tag me in the chat. You want to get my attention. So American military, both Vietnam era issued pieces. On one side, we have an Omega 2179 from, sorry, from World War II. This is actually, well, dumbass. This is from World War II. And on the right hand side, we have a, a sterile Benrus. And you can see just how the European and the American sides attacked their field watches. How cool is it as a pairing? I, th I, I really enjoy it. You can understand why. Maybe I'm a bit biased, but I, I much prefer the simpler layouts of the British approach to how they did their W10s and watches of that time. But we know, I mean, the Americans especially, they love the 24-hour layout. And that's, I, I find it amazing how, how regimented and how specific the requirements were for both sides. Where, as we know, 24-hour time is very popular in, in the States. 0800, you know, 0700, 0, uh, what am I saying? 2100, they, that's just a part of the process of... Um, you know, timing things. So it's pretty useful giving someone the, uh, the format of 24 hour time on a watch. The issue is, is that it's a bit cluttered. That's the, the off, what am I saying? That's the trade off. Um, but it's just so nice seeing these two together. It's one of my favorite pairings to appreciate just how different field watches were. And then we look to the Omega and we see how the, the numerals rotated around the dial. And this is clearly a forties watch. Don't know why I didn't say that earlier. The, uh, ruler styled minute marks that run around it and oh, it's just so clean you know we have kind of semi syringe semi pencil hands um, this side kind of sword syringe hands so it just it just goes on and on and on i love them field watches are just a dream i, I think for anyone getting into the hobby would most definitely recommend getting one of these get this for your grandson get this for your child when they're going to high school i mean this is what you start them with let them appreciate anti-magnetic uh, Faraday cages and mechanical hand-wound pieces and smaller in scale, but it has everything that you want. It's just, yeah. Only off by a second, not bad, Videv. Good observation. Forbin says, patina perfection. Dial is, yeah, desirably aged. They're so good. They really are good. Um, <laughs> oh, geez, you guys are great. I love it. Uh, and Megan says, I love, but you're partial to the Benras from Vietnam. Yeah. I can see, I mean, the 60s field watch does have its own appeal to itself. I would agree. The W10, the Smith W10 is my favorite field watch ever. And similar typeface, similar arrangements, just not 24-hour um, time. Yeah, it's a gem. It is really a gem. Right. Let's try and uh, see if I can work out how to do this better now. So we've done Eric Spallon Ross Diver. We're not looking at that again, ever. Uh, next, we can jump to, hmm, let's jump to Vince. Chrono Tokyo, 38 millimeter that he sold. It was just too small on the wrist. And 
I mean, this is something that I wanted to specify is just how beautifully arranged it is. It's a bicompax. The date is in the right place. The scale, I think, is pretty good. The size and proportions of everything. We have, again, I've never noticed this. Check this out. Leaf hand and a syringe sword hand for minutes. That's something I've never seen before. Chrono Tokyo. I mean, this name, Chrono, this looks just like a Hoya logo. This looks like that's exactly where they got it from. No? I don't know who came first, the chicken or the egg, but uh, yeah. Got some contrasting colors there. And don't you love how sparse the left-hand side of the screen is? It's very, um, it takes off the tension. You think the show is almost about to end, but it's barely started. Uh, Hamilton or L.L. Bean watches are excellent. Yeah, I agree. That's Joseph right in the chat. And Megan says she started her passion for field watches at 14. Hell, I wish I got a field watch when I was in high school. I've said that hundreds of times. Um, I would have changed would have changed my life, I think. <laughs> would have changed my appreciation for watches. At a very early age, I would have understood what's going on. Um, never heard of this make. I have before. I think we've actually featured Chrono Tokyo in the past. But yeah, Japanese watch, I don't know what the movement is. It's not a, it's not a seagull-based caliber. Maybe it's a Seiko-based move. I do not know. Uh, don't ask me. But the size and scale, everything works. I think it has a... Um, a Hesalite crystal too, which is nice. Really great elements. Eric's talking about Hendrix and Van Halen and Ingwe. Don't know why. Probably about guitars. I don't know, maybe a Stratocaster. Van Halen didn't play a Strat. Uh -uh. I think he stuck to Les Pauls. Right. Gonna carry on. I, I, and George asking, Chrono Tokyo Kurono. No idea. I have absolutely no idea. Maybe. Maybe it is. But uh, superb watch. Nice contrasting elements there. Okay, let's jump to Slatsman next with an Aragon dive master. This was one of the last segments that was, hold on a sec. Justin says, nice to have you here, Justin says, doesn't Chrono Tokyo have a famous designer? I wouldn't know. I don't know the brand that well. <laughs> I've seen the brand, but I do not know the brand. No, I really don't know. Could easily be. I mean, they've done some good stuff here. I've just looked at this handset. This is like a proper arrow. And here we have a leaf hand. Very peculiar. And also the the, horizon, the vertical lines that run through the dial. Lots to take in. Yeah. I mean, you see how obsessed we get around these elements. That's just the way these shows go. Um, Chrono Tokyo uses Seiko. I was thinking Seiko, but then I'm, I'm so used to seeing a, a date complica a day complication. So for Chai Town, I mean, you know your watches pretty well. So um, in this category, for sure. Okay, I'm going to move on next. Let's jump to an Aragon Dive Master. This shot was superb from, from Slatsman. And it is the, okay, <clears throat> I'm going to get this completely wrong. We're going to try. You've got to try. You'll never know unless you try. The Cuyahoga National Park. Cuyahoga National Park. Now, bear in mind, I'm from Africa, where everything's, you know, Zulu and Kosa and Indebele and, and Swan. It just doesn't stop. There's so many. So you've got to try. Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I've never seen a pearl dial, but Aragon apparently knows how to do pearl dials better than most out there. And he, he did mention this is the cheapest watch in his collection, but build quality-wise, far, far from, from anything inferior. And there are lots of us here that love them. I mean, Eric Bell, he has hundreds. Thomas, they're really popular watches in this zone. So when you want something, the only issue is the size, I think, that it affects many people's wearing experiences. These watches are like 45 mils. They're monsters. But I think the I love the dial. I really love the dial. Contrasting elements there. Cyclops lens. Ugh. Cyclops, you've got to enjoy. It's just an absolute dream. Right. Going to catch up with you in the chat. Everyone's just chatting amongst themselves. Great. That means I can move on to the selection of other watches. What should I do next? We could look at Megan's pieces. Hmm. Yeah, I think we will. I think we'll go to that next. Awesome piece. Too big for me. I mean, that's the issue. The one big problem is its size and its thickness. But as far as value for money, one of the best out there would absolutely recommend to so rob next let's have a look at yet another casio oak now rob funny enough the, the exact same watch that we saw a second ago he said to me in he said to me in the email it was a great worded email very nicely um <laughs> very nicely shared uh, about his backstory and he loves this piece and he has a great collection of watches too and then he says um at the end of the email apology he's an all blacks fan as in the rugby New Zealand All Blacks team. And my reply to Rob, and I think Eric and Hans will agree that nobody is perfect. That's what I like to say. <laughs> uh, no, don't worry, there's no bad blood. Uh, if anyone knows rugby and, and sports, they'll understand. Um, 
he loves the All Blacks, and this watch kind of sums it up. This would be a perfect All Blacks watch. Uh, they've they've had lots of collaborative exercises with Tudor and their Chronos and their their um, yeah contrast. I mean, there's a problem with this watch is that there is none of it. But I mean, at the same time, it's pretty cool. The what you can enjoy is the light play and how off angle off axis works and how you can read it pretty easily when you're you know tilting your wrist around it forces you to actually look at the watch in uh, in different lights a bit more to yeah play with it again no ticking seconds hand a dream is a real dream come out there come out there <laughs> yeah yeah um that's the hacker for anyone who doesn't know uh, that and megan mentioned that aragon has 42 mils i did not know that megan I always thought they were around the 44 and 45. That's good news to me. Um, it may be stealth, but not readable under many conditions. And that's the thing. I mean, that's the trade-off. A black-on-black -black watch, not the most legible thing in the world, but it looks damn cool. I mean, it's this watch would garner... The joke is, this watch would probably garner a lot of attention today. Don't you think? You would probably stop a lot of people with this and be able to show... They would, ask, they would at least ask you what you're wearing because you don't see watches that don't have polished and reflective surfaces but in the dark yeah a bit of a problem a bit of a problem okay so we looked at the casios we looked at the zin let's jump now to all the last watches on this little list is uh it's from megan so we can start with are you ready for this gerard perigo laureato with a diamond set bezel now gerard perigo the laureato line is one of the most fascinating in this area, I think Watchbox actually did a review of this piece today in their Weekend Watches clip. And there's so many things to take away from it. Um, I love the skeleton the most in this category. But I also enjoy when a watch can attack diamond setting correctly. And uh, Samurai's back. Good. I hope you haven't, I hope you missed the, uh, the absolute disaster a couple of minutes ago. Um, so, diamond setting bezel done so well here. Clean, simple, it's not in your face. Actually tasteful bling, as Hans says. And there's this fine line that you have to ride with a lot of these watches where it can get, just be an absolute mess. But this one, from a distance, you would barely even notice it was set, you know? And the blue, as, as Eric mentions, it's a beautiful blue. This reminds me of the Smurf blue that we see on um, the white gold Submariner. And it's a cool piece. I mean, great texture and everything there. No ticking seconds hand. And pencil hands, they've really addressed it well. These watches are out there. I think, gee, squeaking chair. These watches are out there now with uh, with the APs and the Nautiluses disappearing. Um, this is such a good example of a watch that you can find very easily. And uh, yeah, it's a joy. Okay, going to move on. I'll keep this on the screen for a little while as I address everyone in the chat. Han says, not overdone. Uren Sun says, most Casios are readable. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, this is that one example. I think of all of them, this new Casio Oak segment is one in the all black version um, that that is illegible, I should say. But Megan did also mention that there are lots of models in the zone that are that have white elements to them as well. There's so much variety. I think we'll probably have more Casios on later on too. That's Cobalt Blue he mentions. Awesome, awesome. And TDY Ranger says it's hideous and wonderful at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it's not for everyone. But I, one thing I can admire about this piece, the more I look at it, the more I appreciate the bezel, actually. Not the, not the diamond setting so much as the, the way the, the hexagonal element lines up with the rounded zone. And it doesn't feel too heavy, especially when you see uh, it next to a watch like the Royal Oak and those examples. And bear in mind that this watch is old. This is not like an homage watch, like some people have said in the past. Uh, this predates the Nautilus. I think it was almost in line with the Royal Oak when it was released back in the day. Um, yeah, much cheaper than an AP, as Megan says. I mean, yeah, good example. Okay, and then the other two, again, and under the theme of outlier watches, this worked out pretty well. Uh, next up, we're going to have a look at MBNF. Haven't done that. Let's enjoy. And there was mention about type on the dial. Yeah, I do agree. Let's get back up there. Type is nicely balanced. It's good to see, especially on an elegant sports piece, something that rides the dress sports uh, wire pretty well. MBNF. Don't even ask me what reference this is, if it's a legacy machine or a or a unlegacy machine. I can never get it right. But this is very much MBNF's approach. Waco did an excellent uh, interview with, with uh, Max Busser. Is it Boucher? I can never get his name right. Uh, on on Revolution, they had a, a talk for about an hour. And it was really insightful just listening to his experience. 
I find it so fascinating how a watchmaker can just break out of the mold and come up with these approaches and, and these designs. I mean, this is his, his archetypal approach. Power reserve on the right-hand corner. We have a date complication, small time telling, and then we have the balance in the center of the dial. It's great. I don't know how they get the stippling on the dial to look like this, but it's just, it kind of looks like a skin irritation if you look at it quickly. <laughs> but I love the texture. It's almost like um, bronze, bronze from back in the day. Just a clean balanced we're chatting about golden ratios and everything there i mean this is uh, an example so let's see if someone who knows what they're talking about can explain to me what this watch is exactly um rick says the mbnf lmx released this week oh, oh yes i mean that was the crazy crazy complicated model right yeah ground for enamel i'm pretty sure they are mason i mean it looks looks like it when you see how the light plays on it these are most definitely enamel elements of course you have heat blued hands we don't even address those things isn't it bad that like we're so used to seeing heat bluing on on examples of watches that uh, here is a here is a piece that has it all and we're not focusing on it. I do find the texture on this dial fascinating though. That's one thing that keeps drawing me back. Can you imagine if if the date complication had Romans instead of that would be so funny. What a mess. Uh, nice looking watch. Really nice looking watch. Um, punched from the back. It might be BDEV. I really don't know. I'm guessing that's the only way they'd be able to apply it. You're right. And they will probably be like a fingerprint, very, uh, very piece unique, because you can never get this kind of result the same way twice um, if it's been punched out. Okay. And anyone else in the chat asking me questions, again, tag me if you want to get your point across. I'd like to hear. Uh, this is good fun. This is good fun. I'm glad we're getting back on track after that little failure earlier. So we jump from, you know, pretty elegant and understated, really nice dial approach to something that's a little bit more exuberant, also an outlier. And then to something that is completely bonkers, which is the uh, Uwerk uh, reference, UR100. I think many of us can enjoy this watch just because it reminds us of, I mean, in, in my case, from an industrial design point, the, the stealth fighter feel, the, the development, the process behind this kind of watch and how the time telling works, how it can be arranged. It's just superb. It's a really nice looking piece. Uh, not for everyone. It's definitely an outlier, and it fits that it fits that bill pretty well. Um, ten year anniversary of the Legacy Machine LM01. God, I mean the MBNF lines. It just doesn't stop. This hobby, you can talk about one line for the rest of your life. You could study that one line, and and you're done. Yeah. So if you want to know how to tell the time, it's pretty simple. These we actually looked at that Gorilla uh, Drift Elise GT earlier. Same approach, where it all revolves around a single pinion. And these numerals revolve as the hour changes. So you can see it's nine and you read it from right to left, 9.30, exactly. The red accent, really nice photo too. Awesome that you managed to get the red highlighted here, Megan. Um, so you can see it's 9.30. And as this hand rotates away, so you'll see 10 swap out. You can see 10 sitting there. 10 will swap out and then replace it at the naught. So it's really good. It's actually a very efficient time teller as well. Um, for its function not only are you appreciating that the high horology going into the movement but you're also getting quite a legible experience and for someone who is a you know someone who flies planes if you're a jet fighter this is the kind of watch you want to see on the wrist don't you think it's uh it's awesome and eric says poetry in that design it's uh yeah it's it's been well considered it feels like something that audi should adapt in their in their mantra you know improvement was it advancement through technology yes great it's just great. So we have just looked at the selection. Bear with me as I get out of the zone and hop back to what we had in the beginning. Bear in mind again that now the order has been thrown all over the show. So we might have a few repetitions, but we will see. Let's have a look. Blanc okay, that's good. That's all in good form. Scrolling down. Chris, we are clipping Zippo. Let's carry on through. So I think we botched it at Eric Bell. So now we've just, okay, cool, cool. We're back on. Eric, thank you for that excellent, excellent Ballon Ross diver that crashed the show. I just had this thing in the back of my mind saying that it would happen. We're going to jump to Garrett next. And you can see that we still, we still, oh my gosh, we still have quite a lot to go. So uh, strap in. We're getting everything. We're going to be seeing everything today. One of my favorites in the Seamaster Professional line. The, uh, the great white that I nicknamed uh, his first luxury watch. This is from Garrett again. He picked up this watch, I think, a couple of months back, and he was deliberating with his 
I think his wife or his girlfriend about what to get. And pretty glad he settled on this. It's an awesome watch. A great, <laughs> a great way to start. And Eric says, sorry to everyone. I mean, we must guilt you now for that. That was all your fault that I decided to go and edit that. So funny. And we had a good time. Um, it's good for me. It helps, uh, you know, work the nerves. Some uh, more wine into the system. Okay. Anything else going on in the chat? Anyone like to ask? We've got, got some German going on from Hans, as would be expected. Uh, affordable homage of the Urwerk. That would be cool. I'm pretty sure there's some micro brands out there that are playing around. There's some amazing things you can do with an ETA base caliber. And uh, you can probably find that there's some brands out there that are having a good time. So, great white. What can we say? I think Bark Adrian from Bark and Jack has picked up this piece. White Snake. <laughs> uh, I love White Snake. What's the here? Here I go again. What is the? Is that that's the song, right? Here I go again. It's a banging song. And uh, who's the guitarist? Bernie Marsden with that Les Paul. Oh, what a dream of a Les Paul. I know my guitars. It's pretty good for someone who's been talking for two hours nonstop. So, uh, love it. Reverse Panda aesthetic. Uh, the accented ele elements. I guess the only issue that some might have a problem with. I mean, funny hands. Oh, Hans, it's Henry Jekyll. Uh, the, the, the hands, the sword hands, I guess, could divide opinion. The size is also, I wouldn't say for everyone, 42 mils. Again, you're dealing with a white dial, so the watch would technically visually wear bigger on the wrist. Um, but still, I think the way the colors have been done, the text has been handled very well. We were chatting about um, typeface, on not typeface, chatting about the wave dial, wave accents on, on these dials earlier on. I can't remember who mentioned it. I think it was Chaz or, or Chai Town who mentioned it. But um, it just it just speaks about the watch's purpose. And they do simple things like zirconium dioxide to mention that it is a ceramic dial that you're dealing with. It's a cracking looking watch. It looks excellent on a rubber strap. And yeah, it's a real strap monster in this category, but feels very modern too. Okay. Oh, and also cool. We got a we got a loom shot. Enjoy. I think this is the only loom shot of the show. Uh, it's really nice. Also, I like to see how they contrast the green and blue accents there. I'm just trying to work it out. If I've been talking for two hours already and we've still got good grief, this is going to be a long show, a really long show. Okay, strap yourselves in. Um, I'd recommend taking an ad break, going to get yourself some coffee and come back or you know, anything to keep you going, Red Bull, whatever your tastes. I feel like this is going to be a long talk. <laughs> Uh, Andreas says, as impressive as this watch may be, I don't like the bezel and the dive won't patina. Oh, yeah, the dial won't patina. I think it's sad. I mean, that's the issue with, with modern watches uh, in themselves. Modern watches are pushing. I mean, I made a video about dive bezels earlier, and the whole format of the modern watch, um, where it's going as this thing that doesn't age, is going to be a, a detractor for a lot of people. Um, and where exactly is it going to go? I can put that link in the corner of the screen, maybe, if I remember. Um, yeah, there's lots to talk about. The It's the catch-22 of you want a watch that's going to look pristine, but the end result is that it's not going to age or show character and wear. And that's a problem, um, unfortunately. But uh, that's the way it works. Ooh, the next watch coming up. This one is a good talking point from George. He said to me in his email that these are rushed photographs. He thought they were kind of meh. And I mean, come on, this is just amazing. What, how, you, can't, you can't say that these are poor photographs. Uh, let's talk about this for a bit. The Super Ocean Rainbow, I think they call it, right? The 57, the 1957, or was it the 55? I don't know. But I'm trying to wrap my head around why this watch is getting so much interest and attention. And why are so many people are talking about this piece? What's the, what's the reason? Are people buying these watches because they, they actually like the rainbow effect? Or are they buying it because it's collectible? Um, and George says 57. Thank you, George. Uh, let's see what else is going on in the chat. Slurring for most of it. Oh, dude, am I slurring? That's not good. I'll take some coffee because of that. Can we hit five? <laughs> Zach says uh, five in the morning. That'll be a bit brave. So I'm trying to remember. They call this the Pride Watch, but was it also not the COVID relief watch? I can't remember the the summary of what this piece was exactly and, and where it all came from but um i think it had to do with sales around the time of what was going on 
um, I've had so many people offering this watch to me, and I'm like, mm, that's not my vibe. I'm not, I'm not that keen. But it's pretty good to see what they've done. And even the loom on this watch works, which is amazing. All these different colors, the dial still glows. Look at that script. Now, the new CEO of Breitling is doing such, such a good job with you know, pushing these watches out and making them more accessible and doing a lot more. You know, digging back into the archives and you know more unisex watches and so on and so on. It's great. It really is a nice example here. And there's also a cool off-angle shot that we can enjoy. How nice is that? Notice how that what makes the 57 pretty unique in the zone is that the dish of the bezel actually digs inwards. It's got this concave effect to it. So you can really appreciate these plots here. And these photos are superb, George. I mean, really. George has sent a few more in the past, and uh, it's it's uh, it's awesome. Okay. Missing you all in the chat. Eric is saying 155. Does that what he thinks? I mean, we are going forward an hour daylight savings very soon. So, yeah, I've got to keep a track of that. Don't want to, don't want to extend the watch time for another. <laughs> and Mark is saying at least. So 155. What is that, an hour? I don't know. I'll run through. I mean, we've got some Rolexes we can flick through, which won't take too long. And yeah, some really nice shots. I've, I've really enjoyed this series of outliers today. Uuh, I think we need to have a bet, though. What are we going to end at? And then I just need to rush through it so that you guys all lose. Okay, Breitling stocks are on the rise. Yeah, I wonder how many of these are being worn by both men and women, wristwatch experience says. And I mean, that begs the question. <clears throat> I'm also noticing how they're adjusting their sizes. They're, they're definitely including the woman market too, the woman, the ladies market too, uh, which is superb. I mean, hell, this hobby deserves a lot of that. And it's all to do with just the scale of the watch. Nothing else, really. Um, Sadly, 40 mils is a, is a bit too big for a lot of ladies out there. So scaling it back down to 38, 36 changes. They've done some good stuff. The bullet bracelets they're introducing and, and so many other features. It's nice. Really nice. Okay. Really cool shot. I really appreciate it, George. Thanks for this. We're moving next to a Yammer. A really nice Yammer. Joseph says, um, Breitling Rainbow reminds me of Rado Captain Cook. Yeah, I mean, they were they were brought out the same time, basically, right? The exact same time. And parts bin specials. These watches were assembled from bits and pieces. There was no right or wrong answer about how it was done. But there are a few defining elements that makes this watch. The quarter Arabics, quarter Arabics, the quarter markers with these rounded elements here is very true to Breitling's language. Yeah, it's some good stuff. Some really good stuff. I like I like what it represents. Don't know so much about the rainbow effect. It's a love it or hate it thing. Let's have a look at a Yemma speed graph. Andreas says, I think it's 42. I'm pretty sure it's 42. Uh, okay, carrying on. Yemma speed graph up close. This is a vintage example. No, it's not. It's modern. It's a modern example. And Yemma is another brand on the rise, doing so good with, the, I mean, another brand that has so much of an archive to pull ideas from and concepts out. And here's an example. Um, there's been, what's another good example? Nevada Gretchen has been also talking, been spoken about a lot. They're doing similar. They're bringing out these crazy cool chronographs from back in the day. And here we have a piece that kind of epitomizes that. Love these hands. I mean, how can you not love it? Uh, by Compact's layout. I think the way you can tell that this is a reissue is that it says France on it, where it would normally, I think Yemma was Swiss at one stage. No, someone correct me, but it would have Swiss on the on the base of the dial. Now under new ownership and being a, a, re, a revival, we could say, it now has France on the dial. It's just great. It's a superb, simple layout. And I think there's a nice distance shot we can enjoy. And this watch is sitting on a pipe. I'm not a smoker, so I do not know what uh, what makes this special. Maybe someone might. This looks like it's it's. Uh, I can see some wood grain in it, but someone help me out if anyone knows their stuff. Awesome watch on the correct kind of strap. You know, a rally racing strap, really clean and sharp. Okay, love the reverse panda. Chaz says, yeah. I mean, they really are true to form, and just the simple things like the way they've addressed their logo. I love the Yemen logo, that that 50s curl, that comb over hairstyle. It's just cool. There's so many of these little traits that have been just disregarded by brands today that deserve limelight. It just adds to the visual complexity, and you can enjoy the watches so much more for that, the little bit of character uh, plots and points. Right. It's a it's a Dunhill pipe. It's a, I don't know, it's the beer. Roar of the Tiger, welcome. And to all of you who are, who are joining us still, uh, welcome to the show. I've been on an interesting journey over the last few hours chatting and, and 
destroying the stream and getting it back on again, but I'd be having a good time uh, hitting the uh, fruit punch. Megan says that Yemen are an amazing brand. The rally straps are brilliant. They look superb. I need to get myself a rally strap. Um, short lugs on the rainbow. Yes, that's something else from, from Zeus. Uh, they have scaled it well. So it's 42 mil, but I think the overall length of the watch is about um, 45 from lug to lug, 45, 46. That does play a part in the wearing experience. Yeah, good points. Very good points. So, Yemma, really cool piece. Love it. And we're going to have a look at a vintage one in a second too, I think. We're not done with Yemma yet. Huh. I'm a great laugh at parties, Eric says. I'm sure you would be, Eric. I mean, you're a character, man. You're a real character. Um, Dan's saying, I don't hear many complaints about the imbalance in watches, like Omega Speedmaster with the subdials. Chronos with the running seconds at the nine bothers me. The balance with the subs. Yeah. I mean, we can. I'm sure we can have some examples to look at. We can point them out. Um, my compacts is turning to it's, it's becoming a more popular approach by a lot of brands don't you notice lately recently um i think offers a lot more opportunity for space and legibility as a reading experience i guess you are sacrificing something like running seconds or i think in most cases the 12 o'clock marker yeah then the watchman's adding more saying sub second at six seems to make a better balance oh very good point that's a very good point. I wonder if we have any more chronos to look at in this category. Hmm. Don't think so. We have a long gene heritage column wheel later on. Uh, but yes, I agree. Having a sub seconds here is better because you can appreciate it working instead of it being at the three or whatever else. That makes a lot of sense. I really do understand that for sure. Um, if I f when you have a look at another chrono, I'll bring it up. I think that's a good point. Um, and Megan's saying that uh, Yemma is killing, yeah, kicking butt in the market. I release more watches in the range any day. I mean, they're so good. The Supermans, I need to get myself a Superman just because it looks the, the French Air Force Superman is just a dream. Okay, next to Jim. Greg, thank you for this. Awesome seeing this piece. Uh, we're jumping to some more micro brands, and this is Baltic. Baltic is an example of a brand that is also going from strength to strength with their pieces, uh, talking about the bicompax arrangements. They're having a great time with sector dials and all sorts. This watch looks to take its inspiration from uh, Blancpain Aqualung from the 50s, right? The, the 12 at the top and the quarter Arabics there. Date at the right place in the 6. You can actually see their open 6s. <clears throat> but this is, an, this is a GMT. And is it a sapphire-capped bezel? Wow. And the colors look superb too. Yeah, there's lots to take in. There really is a lot to take in. And as I let you take it in, I'm going to hit the fisherman's friend because... Uh, voice is going 50 50 will we get black current or will we get uh judging my luck i will get black current and not cherry no there is hope i picked a cherry that's good gotta love cherry fisherman's friends the unofficial sponsor of the show really need to contact them so this is on a um a a tropic strap it looks really good again i think this is definitely taking its inspiration from from the aqua lungs of the 50s um, any Bremons tonight, Doug asks. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe there is. I mean, we're looking at Code 41s and other crazy pieces later on. Uh, there might be. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, yeah, luck is on our sides with with uh, the Cherry Fisherman's Friend if I pick it up. So we're in good shape now. I don't think we'll have any more problems for the rest of the show. Uh, Han saying phallic. What's what's phallic? I'd like to know. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Baltic also killing it. French micro brands up and coming. Yep. Fully agree. Uh, I don't know what is going on in the chat, but then it is midnight, so I guess you guys can pretty much, you know, <laughs> Hans saying there's present. No, don't worry about it. Phallic is an okay term. It's a, it's, a, it's a legitimate term to use. So, I mean, look at these cool elements here, like open six at the bezel. Again, a sapphire-capped bezel is so rare and attractive on watches today. So, I mean, you know, it's just great. Really nice color balance. And what was also nice is that the next watch he sent in, is a Helios, similar kind of category, similar ballpark. Um, and you know, in the micro brand space, they're some of the best. They're some of the watches that I'll talk about the most. Blue Shirt, absolute pleasure having you here. Welcome. You're not late. I mean, you're pretty early. We've only been running for two hours, and uh, the show has crashed a couple of times, but we're back on track, so it's all good. Uh, looks like another micro brand called Batavi. Oof, up and coming. Rare and attractive, Andreas. Nice to hear rare and attractive. Don't worry. I'll keep saying it for as long as I live. 
what if uh, Phillips? Uh, if anyone's new to the channel, that became a call sign. Anyway, awesome looking piece. I love the balance. Love the little elements like the sapphire, the open sixes. I mean, the aqualung. Imagine they reintroduced an aqualung that looked like this. Blancpain, I need to chat to the CEO. If anyone knows the Blancpain CEO personally, please send them my email and let's chat because they are sitting on a gold mine. Make their watches accessible. Make them 40 mils, 41 mils, and just make them everywhere for us to own. And everyone will be buying them. It'll be, it'll just, it'll kill so much competition out there. Anyway, that's my rant. Next to the Helios, the Fairwind. How cool is this? I really like seeing these two watches together. This is also from Jim. Baltic GMT, Helios, Fairwind. Fairwind. I don't like that name. It sounds, it sounds a bit, uh, <laughs> that's funny. So we have batons. It's kind of 70s inspired the way the batons have been done on the dial orange hand i think that's for the seconds and then you have these funky gmt bezels that are uh, you know either a love it or hated thing they're not your typical you know 24 hour layout that you would expect like on this example of the baltic um this is kind of even more old school we could say nice stepping to the dial i like this is this like 20 atmospheres is that how they arrange it yeah the name Fairwind. i don't know so much i mean the, the first thing that comes to mind that there's nothing fair about wind you know, coming from the rear end. That's just something that hit me, talking about phalluses and whatever else is going on here. Let's see what else is happening in the chat. Um, I saw Les has joined us, which is cool. I didn't see him earlier. Uh, what else is happening? Everyone's just chatting amongst themselves. Turbo T2, they just need to make, yeah, 40 mil, 50 fathoms, I'm buying. I'm the same. I would ditch Rolex and I'd buy a Blancpain as my, as my dive watch in that category. How can you go wrong with a 40 mil, 50 fathoms? I mean, it's it's a, it's just a winning formula they're sitting on deliberately by the sounds of it. I do not know. I really, really do not know. Um, Thomas uh, has been banned from sending the CEO of Blancpain mail wanting to test out a watch. He's on the watch list. I can't believe that. I mean, Thomas Thomas is a diehard in this category. So he, he and I, I think, need to band together and get this ball rolling because they need to do it. They really need to bring them out. It's just it's the way. So let's see what's going on. Uh, Forbin, does any watch have a modern Bakelite bezel? Mm, don't think so. A friend has Bakelite bracelets from the 30s. How cool is that? Um, and they have aged crack-free, perfectly lovely satin finish. Bakelite bezel would be different. I've handled Bakelite Zodiacs, Zodiac GMTs, and they are in pristine condition. It's, it's quite incredible. I don't know what, what the parameters are that causes Bakelite to just crumble. I know we're sitting on this watch for a while. Sorry, I'm just going on a tangent. Um, this is a good example of a watch. Both of these watches have what we would see as things that resemble uh, Bakelite bezels. I don't know the parameters of what affects them, but I guess UV rays, they, they kind of are chemically inert in this category, so that's something that helps. And talk about bracelets. I don't. Maybe it's just the, the composition of the material. Uh, they did have varying forms of Bakelite and how they, they built it for certain applications. And maybe it's it's got a better hardness to it. I really don't know. Good point, though, Forbin. You always bring some great stuff across. Keep keep asking the good stuff. Um, and Joseph says, good idea. Black, Blanc Plong Aqualung in blue aqua would be awesome. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Yeah, the 50 Fathoms is the diver of all divers. Well, I did put a link to the 50 Fathoms video in the chat since we're talking about it. Watch that video. Do it. Save it. It's the best discussion on a dive watch I've ever seen. When you actually interview the original CEO who came up with the idea of the 50 Fathoms, it's just beautiful. It's so well done. Next up, let's get into some Rolexes now. So Jim, awesome pieces. Really like your choices of these two. They sum it up very nicely. To Jimmy, known as Flieger 777, right? That's his, his call sign. He flies Boeing 777s daily, and he loves his pilot watches. And now we can just enjoy the sheer... Rolex in this category, as well as an awesome airman, Blycene airman in a moment. 50 Fathoms, every, I mean, can you just imagine the demand for those watches if they came out and were mainstream? It would be huge. It would be huge. Okay, so we've had a look at the Air King already. A uh, real outlier watch. It's, uh, it's a gem. I'm, I'm, it's growing on me day by day. Another Air King, Chaz says. Yep, yep, I agree. Um, and we're going to motor on to the next one. I think we've chatted about these. <laughs> I've watched I've watched part one three times. Yeah, Junior, it's good, right? Oh, can't I'm gonna watch it again. It's so it's fantastic. It just is fantastic. So we've seen the Air King. 
it's great to see it. And I think Jimmy did say in his email that it's nice seeing it in its actual environment. He flies a lot. So uh, he's, he's sitting at the controls. Here is a cool watch that we don't see very often. Outliers. This one is it. Um, Glycine Ammon GMT Chronograph. I don't know what's going on. It's just got everything in one place. Um, I'm just having a look at it. There's something about, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how identifiable this watch is. It struck me for a second because the dial doesn't look like an airman, right? But you look at the bezel and you look at the case and it's just, you just immediately think glycine airman. This is just the character sign. This is really complex for what it is though. Hey, look at it. Got a GMT hand. You've got, hold on. That's your date. A red, so it's actually a pointed, no, it's not a pointed date. What is going on here? 24 hour time. So I'm guessing that is another time zone. I don't know. It's got a 30 minute chronograph. It's got a date complication there too. It's the, it's the everything in one watch. I would imagine it's like 42 mils. What a cool setup too. I mean, talking about a watch that's being used for its purpose. Yeah, it's a real machine. This is the kind of watch you want to be traveling with, I think. It just sums it up. You know, it has it all with it. Mason says, I got the Bakelite box with my Navi timer. That is so cool. I really didn't know that Bakelite was still being used to make things today. I mean, you know, I guess it does have some advantages over the modern materials that we use. Uh, it's it's not expensive, right? It shouldn't be very expensive to work with. It's even now with, with the old technology that they have. Oops, so I say the old um, dies and casts. I'm pretty sure they can make things pretty easily, but it's just robustness that I guess they, they lack in a few areas. Great looking watch though, again looks superb i cannot believe how many how are we going to get through all of this stuff this is nuts anyway we've got some cool stuff to enjoy don't worry the show has still got a lot to to carry on with uh jim thanks for sharing your both oh absolute pleasure jim uh a winning formula with these two pieces i i love how you've both picked them because they kind of remind us of the uh the bathyscaphe i think that's where both of these brands are coming from i love it okay next from jimmy B L R O. We all love a good, root, uh, what do they call it? Superman GMT. What's the name? Pepsi GMT. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, Rolex. I've I've been working on a design video for Rolex uh, that's happening. It's coming out next week, and it's been it's been a slog. I'm looking forward to taking a break from Rolex for a while. Honestly, um, it's they nice watches. Don't get me wrong, but oh, there's so much more variety out there, and we will see now. Uh, there's there's a good handful of Rolexes that we can enjoy. Beautiful photographs. Um, Jim, again, thank you for the super chat, man. Thank you. Um, Roar of the Tiger said, just came from the Breitling site. Charlie Theron and Brad Pitt are spokespeople. What? I don't know that. Charlie's can talk to me into anything. <laughs> yeah, Charlie's, <clears throat> technically the surname is Thron, not Theron. Um, she is the uh, the golden child of Southern Africa, you could say, hitting the coffee. <clears throat> the funniest thing is that... Um, Coming out of South Africa, most most of us know how to speak the language of Afrikaans, which is like a <clears throat> I don't know how to say it. It's it's like a, a deviation of of Dutch, essentially. And not many people understand it unless you speak Dutch. And you can pretty much identify the language. You know, it's it's kind of like Latin, where it's it's very easy to find when it's been spoken. And uh, she's been busted a couple of times speaking Afrikaans and having a South African behind her, and it's the funniest thing. Because you can say you can say anything you want under your breath, and no one would ever. It's kind of like code, you know. Um, how much wine have I drunk? Craig asking. Not enough. Not enough. I'm talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. What else is going on? Love the Baltics. Mm -hmm. So not really an outlier. No, Rick. For the next for the next segment, now we're going to Juan and Jimmy. We're going to be looking at a lot of modern stuff. So let's. Uh, <laughs> how do you go becoming a rolex fanboy do you think yeah for sure i am i'm a diehard <clears throat> no i appreciate them i do appreciate them they like levi's jeans you just got to get them you know something to add to a collection um it's it's a it's a milestone i do think of rolex as a milestone watch that i think everyone should get regardless of where you come from in the world there's something special about a brand that is so recognizable they're not the best okay that's plain and clear you they're not the best watches in the world when it comes to business, there's a business practice of advertising your watches, getting it out there. It's the most identifiable brand in the world. So it's incredible. I love it. From a design point, I can also appreciate the marketing behind it and the advertising and what these watches have done, how they have you know, been built and prepared over the years and the reputations they've gained for themselves. I think it's incredible. Yeah. 
Everyone should own a Rolex. I mean, it's the way. Dan the Watchman, there is a new Blanc Pond 38 mils that is available in blue, white, and black. Ooh. Hard hot watch. Yeah, Eric. It's good. Um, I haven't spoken Afrikaans in so long, so I'd be terrible. I can understand it. I can read it and understand it, but speaking it, I'm absolutely useless. So, <clears throat> Explorer 2. This is what the next video is going to be out on the channel uh, next week. I redesigned the Explorer 2. I, I go further into what we can expect this year. Hopefully, this is the year of the Explorer. Who knows? But uh, this watch, I, I hope it gets a good facelift and gets some more love put into it. Um, blank canvas. The Explorer line is a blank canvas that can be the most creative in this category. When you look at the GMT, this format is never going to change. But there's so much potential to take this watch and to just shift it in a completely different direction, which I'm hoping, I'm really hoping they will. Carl's saying he's opening an Aussie Shiraz, firing up barbecue for some rib steaks. Oh, lucky, lucky man. Yeah, I was supposed to have one this weekend. Um, barbecue, didn't happen. South Africans call it Bri, B-R-A-A-I. Um, I'm drinking a Spanish Shiraz, so that's something. Um, Spurnaventure was asking me about inner rotating bezels. Let's have a look. Oh, how cool is this? <clears throat> so now we have a polar dial. What do I think of inner rotating bezels, as in compressor, compressor dials, compressor-style models? I think it has its merits. It does have its place. Um, it's, I like the fact that it's, you know, they add that extra little bit of protection. It's a, when you talk about from a functional perspective, when you look back in time, I mean, this is a good example of a watch that kind of goes against it steel bezel this thing is basically built to be scratched and then used you know um when you look to the compressor bezel being inset it's it was their way of just assuring that the watch that the bezel wouldn't get damaged and as far as safety precautions go can't really go wrong with that <clears throat> when you're dealing with um baker light oh, i'm not going to go all the way out there again when you're dealing with things like baker light that you know is very prone to damage in a compressor bezels you, you eliminate that factor. So technically, it's one of the best formats in this in the zone. Nice question. Thank you for that. Um, someone said in the, in the comments, uh, never heard of Rolex. Is that a micro brand? Hans, it used to be a micro brand back in the day. I mean, can you believe that Longines and those names were ahead of us? <laughs> I love it. I mean, how times change. Um, yeah. So this, the, the Explorer Polar, it's pretty incredible how this watch has grown. I've done some designs, some redesigns about this watch, which will also be featured in that video. It was very good. It took a long time to develop all of these, but uh, it was fun. This is easily identifiable, where I think the black dial could use a bit more differentiation in the line, don't you think? All right. Everyone's talking about Shiraz, and, and so it is. Uh, it's all good. God, I love our wines. I've got to get back into wine again. It's been a long time. Right. Jimmy, Flieger 777, thank you for sending these in. And... We're jumping straight to more Rolexes from Juan. There he is in the chat. Really nice polar. Juan, we're going to enjoy your stuff. So we're going to start with some modern Rolex and then end on just a beautiful Hamilton. Just oh, one of the best watches of the show. You'll see why. So we jump to the Batman, Batgirl, whatever you call it. <clears throat> I like the name Bruce Wayne a bit better. This is one of my favorite watches, I think, in the, in the GMT zone. Yeah, it's cool. I said it a trillion times, the, the blue sky, the night sky, it all just kind of makes sense. It's the more dressy alternative. But isn't it cool to see that we can actually jump between both examples in one sitting? Um, let's have a vote. Let's get some community engagement going in the chat. Would you rather have the Pepsi or would you rather have the, the Batman or Batgirl? I'd like to know. I will start in the chat. And I'll just, you know, both of them on Jubilee bracelets. Who would go with what? And I feel like it's going to be a unanimous on the pepsi side that's my that's my thinking at least uh but who knows who knows both Rick says <laughs> coke yeah, that would be cool right uh blue black all day pepsi batgirl batman's greater than pepsi hmm batman's way better i'm liking this okay that's interesting i mean it's it's all the thing the batman bruce wayne i guess what makes this watch a bit more acceptable a bit more enjoyable the colors are a bit more dressed down Kind of like jeans. You've got the blue of the jeans. You've got black, which is kind of conventional. You have a, a GMT hand, which is also blue. It's not expressive in your face. Wow, it looks neither on Jubilee. Very interesting. Pepsi, Batman. And, and Mark, you do have the Pepsi, right? So I'm, that's, I mean, that was a bonus point for you there. It looks like the Batman kind of won it by a small margin. Very interesting. 
Yeah, the the blue black day and night sky. I love that feature. Nice looking watch. And here's some more examples of it in the shade. Yeah, I'd love to own one of these given the chance. Um, I'm, I'm edging more towards a GMT Rolex as the watch for me. I've got the dive watch. The Seamaster dive watch is great. This is a cool example for next. Don't know when that'll happen. God, I really don't know. But uh, the root beer is prettiest. I love, I've got to love a good root beer. Yep, I agree. Batman Oyster. How cool is this? Just say no, Han says. Uh, bat, batably. Sorry, that hurt. Hawkins says. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an example. You can call it the Batably. Jubilee. Um, Batman, but on Oyster. I love it. I love how our tastes differ. I mean, that's what makes this, ho this hobby such a joy. Um, get the OG on Pepsi. You know what? The, the OG with the blue dial, the white gold, full white gold with the blue dial, Pepsi for me. Oh, it's a stunning model. Play your cards right, Thomas says. Yeah, I mean, hell, I've got to get a house first. That's on the cards first. Um, right on. We're going next to an Explorer, would you believe? Uh, Juan really sent in the Rolexes today, which is good, and my favorite watch of all time. God. I don't know why this. I I don't know why this watch never connected with me. It's it's sad in a way. I, I actually I um kind of hate myself a little bit that I just didn't connect with it. That it just wasn't something that stuck with me because I love the Explorer. It's one of my favorites. It really is. Ten sixteen Explorer all day. It would be the one watch I would choose in the zone and then move on. You know, something about this just never worked with me. And I, I guess I'm not the only one. Uh, it was a very controversial series of videos where I just started bashing it more and more as the weeks went by. But uh, it's it's the proportions and the size is great. I guess what just didn't gel with me is the is the numerals and, and all of that. I really don't know. It's a superb watch. I mean, so many people love this piece and rightly so. I'm not here to bash your favorite watch. Uh, it's just something that never connected with me, sadly. And I still kind of hate it that, that I never connected with the watch. Um, awesome shot in the Audi from Juan on Everest. I'm guessing it's, I can never get it right. If it's Everest or if it's Rubber B, one of the two. Nice accents of green there. And this is what the watch should be used as. You know, it should be used as a work watch. And I love when you dress it down this much, it really does just, just take all the boxes in that category, in that zone. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the chat. Still sitting on the fence, sub no date is the king of all tool watches. You know, Megan, I would, um, the 14060, one of the most clean, simple dials, I, beautiful 5513 two line absolutely gorgeous i love it um joshua says i share your path with this one it grew on me very recently yeah i mean that's the thing it's i i find it quite flattering um uptick watch reviews actually quoted me when he reviewed this piece and said that um it's a watch that doesn't really jump it never jumps out at you at first it's something that you that you are quite surprised it's so plain that it's it surprises you how how simple it is and it's that meeting point it's that parabola line of where does it go from there? Do you start loving it more or does it just not gel? I'll tell you this, for its simplicity, it does just work as a daily watch. And you're not, you're not constantly drawn to looking at it. Well, I wasn't at least, constantly drawn to looking at the details on the dial. It was just an excellent piece that just integrates into your life. That's the one huge bonus about this watch that I think most can agree with is daily integration that just does the job. This is a good example. It's such a, looking at it on the screen, I'm looking at the, the live show on the, on the laptop. It's beautiful. This shot just epitomizes it. Yeah, I am, uh, I'm struggling. You know, it, it does make me kind of bleak. Um, and Chaz says, I have a feeling it'll be discontinued. Yep, you and me both. 1655 and 5513 all day. Megan, yep, that'd be me too. You know, this hobby, this hobby is a deep, deep hole. All right, let's have a look at a Kermit. Except this looks quite cool in the off lighting. He sent, he sent us some great shots. Juan, he always sends in amazing photos. And now we can appreciate another watch that people can either love or hate. Um, too much text on the dial. I don't know if you're talking about this model, but uh, this is probably the best shot to look at. Megan, as an example, really did not connect with this watch at all. And this, very much like the Explorer, in a different way, a different context, is a watch that you can either like or dislike because of that green bezel they're polarizing for different reasons you know um joseph says explorer is a good piece but there's something clinical and cold about it yeah i mean this is coming from the guy who owns the aqualung you know you're, you're very lucky joseph really it's it's one of my favorites in their line and rightly so i think you've hit the nail on the head um 
It's one thing that kind of bugged me about the watch. It feels manufactured. You know, there's, there's less character in it that I would like. Maybe that was the underlying thing that really kicked me in the nads about the piece at the end of the day. Uh, it just feels a bit too manufactured for its for its liking. So green bezel. I like it. Loathe it. Do you prefer the Hulk? So it goes. The debate continues. It'll never. It'll never end. Uh, Les says my 1655 by Incipio. Hey, that's cool. It's an ETA based caliber, right? Daily wear. Yeah, it's an awesome watch. I mean, it's one of the best micro brand retakes. I'm trying to convince Eddie, uh, owner of Time Factors, to come up with a 1655, a very accurate recreation of the watch, if possible. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Kermit is greater than the Hulk. I mean, this is where the debate starts. Uh, I'm sure this is like one of the most divisive pieces. We have a few of, the, of, of everyone who's watching at the moment that have bought this watch, never connected with it, and it's been moved on. The green bezel. Yeah. You know my you know my feel of ceramic, what I think about ceramic bezels. A little bit too reflective. But then if you like green, if it's your jam, it's your watch. Megan says, I don't really connect with any of the new Rolexes except the sub no date. Prefer to wear my vintage pieces. Yeah, I mean that's and that's really where we start drawing the line of character. This is a good point, actually. We were talking about how bezels are not gonna aid uh, age. I'm hitting the wine again. This is bad. Hold on. This is a good point. <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> <clears throat> Talking about how these modern watches aren't going to visually age as well. Ceramic bezels built to withstand the test of time and all of that stuff. In the end, you're going to have this juxtaposition where the case has been polished and the, the bracelet and everything's going to be scratched up maybe. The bezel and dial is going to be mint. But then we go back to the Explorer line. This watch will have all of those scars, all of those marks. And I find that a very beautiful sentiment about this piece. When it comes to a watch that's built around the tool nature, the tool aesthetic, this is, this is the example of the watch that still remains. And there's mentioning about, I like the pre-C, the pre-ceramics from Hans. Yeah, I mean, that's where all the real character comes from in the end. And then last shot from Juan, before we get to the big reveal, is an 1861 Speedmaster Pro. Hesselite crystal on the old school bracelet. Still a darling. Everyone still loves it for all the right reasons. Uh, it's it's a superb watch. And we had a, a huge discussion around that earlier on during the show from, from Dear Artifact. Um, I couldn't take a complete green as the Hulk, Han says. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, collectors. Collectors have their, their likes and their loads. And Chaz, what did you mention in the chat? I don't know if I missed you there. Um, Kermit greater than Hulk. Yeah, I mean, so it goes. I love that the dial on the Hulk... I just, I just dislike the bezels on all of them. That's my gripe. Uh, that's funny, you know. I think that I think the emerald dial looks gorgeous, but the, the bezel looks a bit too cartoonish. Anyway, let's get to a real winner. Perfect speedy. Hold on a sec. From Eric saying perfect speedy. Hesselite model bracelet. I mean, it's tried and true. The 1861 caliber is a classic, and it's one that will never lose its reputation. So, I mean, that's kind of where we're riding at the moment. We, we are seeing how Omega is improving the technology, but then this one will always have that definitive sharp click when you're running it. Sub seconds at nine, Dan the Watchman says. Okay, so this is a good point. Let's try and address it here. When it comes to balance and reading a dial, you want to have the sub seconds, and there are a few watches out there that do this, I believe. Having the sub seconds, at the running 60 seconds here at the six would be so much cleaner because that's what you can appreciate. Yeah, I can imagine, I can remember there are a few, there are a few brands that do focus on it. I think more in the horterology segments. And then you put the 12 hour, uh, personally, I would put the 12 hour indication at the three and then the 30 minute totalizer on the, at the nine. And it just makes for such a more appealing reading experience. All the hands, all the, all the placements are wrong, basically. You have to shift, so, so you have to shift everything one click to the right and you would be in good shape. Um, yeah, it's funny, it's really funny. Moving on to one of the best shots, best watches of the show. And I think he did send in a few more. There's, well, I don't know, because I rearranged the page, thanks to a certain Bell and Ross diver, <laughs> we're going to have to uh, just sort of play it by ear. This is a Hamilton Reverso salmon dial with Breguet numerals. And it's an absolute gem, gem of a watch. And Juan says, look at the, yeah, look at the Hesselite. I mean, I'm the owner of the, the 57 has the engraved logo. It just completely just wins. It's such a nice element on the watch. It's gorgeous. I, I appreciate it so much. 
Salmon Dial Reverso. We've a ham verso, Justin. Good point there. So we've chatted about this before. Juan has a huge selection, selection and collection of Hamilton reversos. Basically, uh, JLC let Hamilton use the patent as long as they gave them a couple of pence on the dollar for every sale they made with these watches. And I find, <clears throat> and I find that the voice is gone. <clears throat> it's like a, it's like a car. You know, you need to lubricate it, or else you're not going to go anywhere. Very much like all mechanics, I guess the voice box is the same. <clears throat> Right. It's such a beautiful piece. Salmon dial arrangement. No. <clears throat> no. Fisherman's friends. Come on. Please don't be black current. Please don't be black current. Water. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid the downside of talking incessantly for almost three hours does that to you. Salmon dial is beautiful. Breguet numerals. So like I said, um, for every sale, I think every like 20 pence that went into a sale, so they had to pay JLC for using this technology. But it's it's literally, oh, look at that. I know I saved, oh, yes, it's a shot of the back. Look at that. God, that is outstanding. Imagine JLC released this watch. Can you imagine the hype that would happen? after? Oh, this is one of the best watches that I think you've ever sent us, Juan. Um, you have such an incredible collection of pieces. In the not just modern, I mean, he has everything from Vacherons to Breguets, but then just in the, the Hamilton and the Boulevard segments, oh, it's stunning. <laughs> Blue shirt, you're always here on time. Time for a shot, I agree. Let's get to the dregs of my um, fruit punch. Look at the balance. Look at the characterization and the stylization of those numerals. Oh, the seven, that is just a win. The eight, very gothic. The nine, open. That's that's an interesting arrangement. You don't see that very often. Yeah, I mean, you can just drink it all in, you know. And like true reverso fashion, it's a legitimate reverso. I, I love it. It's one of the most fascinating pieces. I love the backstory <laughs> and and just the the whole final result. I mean, God, it's stunning. What year is it from, Juan? I would imagine like the 50s, right? Uh, it's just beautiful. Really is just gorgeous. Sorry that I'm missing you in the chat. Let me get back in. Uh, any more questions? Tag me. Wonderful photo. Wonderful photo. Salmon flavor. Yeah. Anything with a salmon dial. I made a video about salmon dials um, on the channel somewhere and looked at the history of the deco movement and why it was the fashion and why it's becoming such a hot item for collectors. And it kind of specifies piece, unique pieces today. And, and so it goes. It doesn't stop. Chrono Craze, just having some inexpensive fun to exercise my creativity <laughs> and see if I could replicate Larco's. Oh, well, we're going to have a look at, we're going to have a look at example later on, your, your Seiko mod. That was good fun. It's actually a stunning, a stunning piece you shared with us. We're going to get there eventually. Um, and Mason, there's something to be said for aluminum bezels. They seem less flat in color. Yeah, yeah. Al um, alloy bezels, well, ally, ally bezels play with light a lot more. Aluminium. Uh, going all photos, though, real life might be different. Aluminium bezels do uh, deserve a lot more credit. I mean, I did a video on bezels a couple of weeks back and specified how I enjoy them a lot more over ceramic because they're flat. They feel more tool-centered, uh, tool-focused. Late 1930s, Juan, you hear it here first. This is almost 100 years old, this watch, and still, God, it's one of the best. One of the best submissions of the show. Excuse me. Uh, salmon dials have been missing for too long. Well, they'll come back. I'm sure they will. Um, sadly, they're only used now for limited editions and, and releases in that zone. Okay, let's carry on. Funny enough, we're jumping to a Hamilton next from Junior Johnson. And he was in the chat earlier, I think. I think I missed him. Um, check it out. Junior Johnson sends us the bog standard, plain, simple, classic icon of American field watch design, the Hamilton khaki, on a khaki strap. We looked at a vintage Benrus earlier on, and here is an example of virtually the same watch. <clears throat> One of the best pieces to get into when you start this hobby, I think. They're still easily accessible. Um, I've been looking at the Hamilton W10. They call it the, um, the Pro Pilot. And that watch has a mineral crystal and all kinds of stuff. This one is an automatic. It's it's got a sapphire crystal. It gives you all all the the bits and pieces that you want, especially in a beginner's watch. And and the same thing with the case. You know, proper brushing and finishing. They've nailed it. I think this is their top seller even today. <laughs> I still think this is their top seller. Um, yeah, superb. They you just can't go wrong with it. 
it's it's such a nice cornerstone watch for any collection i think and i can't recommend it enough ladies and gentlemen get yourself a field watch you will not regret it it's just so much fun in a small package um yeah sorry everyone that i'm missing you all in the chat uh, forbin says repainted salmon dial not all redone is wrong when you can like it yeah i agree and don't worry chrono Craves, we're going to get to you eventually uh, you're coming up very soon again the alphabetical order is a little bit thrown off and i need to remember that toby is the last guy that we're going to feature because his watches are superb so yeah junior johnson absolute gem of a watch and you timed it very well since we looked we looked at that vintage benris from the vietnam era khaki on a green strap yeah uh, look at the subtle difference between the triangle hour markers between 12 3 6 9 Ooh, i noticed how cool is that very good point a little bit more elongated it's those little details that what's what makes the field watch such a dream um i should have had the w10 on today my my smiths i absolutely just I, so en enamored by them and their simplicity and in today's sense i'm going on another diatribe in today's sense when we talk about watches being these anachronistic things that people don't wear this doubles as a sports watch a field watch all purposes um and you get so much you know respect and kudos wearing one of these pieces today it's a joy love it this hobby is great junior johnson always a pleasure thank you for sending this in um with asparagus yes something to be enjoyed with asparagus hans don't know <laughs> khaki auto 38 a gem right to kevin next i can't remember this whoa here we go again uh this is another i mean three issues again in, in the longine camp longine heritage column wheel chronograph in reverse panda explore to okay so so kevin's email to me was basically around uh he wanted to get a rolex by his 30th like like me actually and he had a bit of an issue and he's he's more fixated on getting the watch by 35 now at this point so yeah i'm with you in that sense he wants to get an explorer i think an explorer 2 by 35 it's good to have these goals in life i think um but this is a watch i don't know if he supplemented with this watch or this is just something from his collection but look how well done it is something you don't see very often again uh, apologies for this damn chair of mine that continues to squeak in the background it's got a mind of its own too so you don't see this very often but a date window that's actually framed at the 4 30 that's something that's a bit of a contentious point actually also notice that there are hobnails that are applied to the dial and similar i mean we were chatting about the patek 5107 earlier how nice is that how clean is that so we have a great amount of balance but the thing is with the the date at the corner here it's a love it or hate it thing for sure it doesn't break up the, the layout of the watch we don't hear the squeak that's good b dev i'm glad to hear it uh, i've got a microphone right by my mouth so that helps go fund me new chair thank you megan you're always just on the ball thank you so much um so so the window being framed like that does draw attention to it which is not always the best thing don't you think hmm that's something but then i have we you chatted about vintage longine earlier and how just you know they have so much to pull from in their archives and simple things like the script being arranged and the typeface and it just gets better and better as you look at it the balance is there so yeah if you want to have a good look longine heritage line there's so many pieces to choose from i don't know what the size is samurai he didn't mention but 42 sounds about right 41 42 doesn't have much of a bezel so it's a bit of an issue uh, it can also wear pretty big it's, it's all dial essentially you know um yeah superb um i'm seeing a chat a comment from um, don't like the date window yeah it is an issue chrono craze would be, would behave would behave being better without the date frame to keep it low-key yeah that's something anyway long lugs long jean so it goes really nice piece the photo is also superb kevin dig it i really dig it okay moving on next to chrono craze now this was cool really nice mod um great yeah andrea saying calatrava like yeah we were chatting about it earlier very similar custom seiko mod now this was cool this is basically you attacking a flieger aesthetic with a seiko movement and everything there from everything from faux loom to to the the, the syringe handset i loved it i saved i think i saved about four images i got the strap and everything there uh, where do we even start um the loom is great uh, let's get a good shot how many did i save i saved five okay 
I hope you can appreciate this angle pretty good. Um, yeah, modding is cool. It's good fun, and we see it often. So this reference is the, if anyone's interested in knowing, SNZG13P, I think. That's what I kind of saved. And then there's this word called a, a, a terolion, a terolion. I don't know if I got that wrong or right. And Megan, thank you for, for boasting the stalk. I've got to get back in there and work on it. I need to put a week aside to do some more designs. I've got a few cool ideas. Um, this, all my links are in the description of this video. If you show more, everything should be there to have a look at. If you want to see the Instagram page or whatever else, um, reach out to me. My email's there too. Yeah, so what do we look at first? Uh, I think the way you've attacked it with the whole... It's a very different dial to what we would expect. I mean, it's kind of type B, right? Type type B inspired with the the double layout of the numerals around the dial. But then you have stepping to it as well. It's just an added emphasis of all of these things here. Um, we're talking about Joe Pesci and great scene and I don't know what is improvised. What film is this? Home Alone? I don't know what's happening. Uh, yeah, cool looking watch though. Really stunning machine. I like how you've you've done this. You've tackled it well, where the space on the dial has been allocated to the right elements. And loom shot, let's get another shot there. It's amazing how this watch looks like it's from the 40s. Um, Turbo, please make stickers. I can do that. I for sure can do that, yes. There's so many opportunities, and I think Teespring has just gone through this whole revamp process. They've modernized it a bit more, so I'm going to get back in. I've struggled with its user interface, but I'm going to most definitely fix it start working on it a bit more it's just one of these sideline projects that you have to do on top of you know running the channel and it can be a bit tech uh, technical a bit busy um right oh and the winged lion yes um oh is that what it, so that's what the term is so it's a pater okay leon as in lion got it so it's a winged lion and i think i mentioned here on the on the description case back uh with a, a lion a winged lion german fuselage so this is something we would see printed on fuselages of, of World War II planes. It's really nice. I think you've done such, I mean, the strap, everything's fitting. And this is not real loom. There was a question in the chat. This is this is faux loom, right? And you've managed to paint it very nicely, very, very nicely. Yeah. So we talk about our uh, our modification pieces. It's always a good time. So Chrono Craze, thank you for sending this in. You've always sent in really cool stuff. You have your own little segments during these shows. That's great. Uh, moving to Luke next. God, we have so many still. It's coming up to three hours. What am I going to do? How nice is this? Whoa, 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 magic mouse. Sorry, avert your eyes. So what do I appreciate first? We have a left-hander. It's always nice to see a watch on a right wrist for a change. And I don't even know the reference to this watch. I, again, me and my reference, especially in the Seiko, the Seiko group. But we have, I mean, we looked at the 5107. How cool is this? Let me try and find it again. Possibly. Can I find it again? It's uh, it's David and Carey. Uh, can I get it? No, that was in the that was in the last bunch of images that fell. Oh, okay, so I can't pull it up sadly because of the page crashing. But um, we have an eggshell dial. I mean, this is just beautiful. Let me talk about Grand Seiko in the in the simplest sense, simplest arrangement. Uh, the hands are stacked, which is a bit of an issue. We can't see everything there, but you get the same kind of feel. You know, Dauphine layout. Uh, the issue with the Grand Seiko is that part on the dial, most would mention. <laughs> but uh, what a nice arrangement. I mean, the double batons, it's elegant, very, very elegant. Um, this is one of the best Grand Seikos I think I've seen in this category. I don't know what they go for. I don't know where they sit in the in the price brackets. Um, but they're gorgeous. They really are gorgeous. And Megan says, don't forget Super Chats for the chair fund. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I have used all kinds of lubricants on this chair, and it still bloody squeaks. can't get it to squeak now, obviously. Uh, it knows it's being spoken about. Yeah, what a cool shot. I mean, I don't know if these are dock siders or whatever you're wearing out here, but it's so cool. Luke, what a nice shot. Great size, too, you know. Uh, should be the oh, – this is good. Thank you, Marcus. The SBGW231. How do you guys know this stuff? Honestly, it's it's one of the things that I just Seiko references. It's like Omega references, you know, when you when you get to the the decimal points. Um, superb, really is superb. Thank you for sending this. It's one of the best Grand Seikos I've seen in this zone. Again, the the balance, no dates, nothing superfluous. It's just it's all you need. Um, <laughs> lubricants, yes, Hans. Lots of lubricants on the chair. Uh, 
So jumping next to Marcus. What a cool shot. Thanks again, Luke. Marcus with another Grand Seiko. I mean, how cool is this? This was one of the last submissions for the show. This is awesome. So the reference SBGX103. SPGX 103 again. And I mean, it's you don't have to actually mention the, the texture on the dial. I have never seen this before. We've seen our snowflakes. We've seen the birch, the birch approach, the birch bark and everything there. Now we actually have the Grand Seiko Lion arranged on a two. I mean, this is something that you would expect to see on a Tudor, don't you think? Yeah. Samurai says lions, lions on the dial. It's cool, right? And this is not, I wouldn't say this is an a late model this is an early model when they have the gs printed at the base correct me if i'm wrong and the star indicates its precision i think it indicates something like five seconds a year precision similar to watches like amiga constellations um we're going to have a look at those later on actually um really nice layout i mean again seiko grand seiko and their dials never seen a lion dial before in my life so that's cool uh, can't believe these watches are back to back. You know, we've seen Bauhaus designs together. We've seen Grand Seikos and, and uh, Speedmasters together, Rolexes. I really don't know when this was uh, introduced, but still superb shot as well, Marcus. Uh, you can really enjoy just all the little details. I love these photos. I mean, to appreciate all of this stuff, it's what makes this so great. I hope you're getting to see all these details on your screens. Yeah. So. Finished with Mark as we're going to jump to Martin next as we come up to the three hour mark. Good God. How you can sit and listen to me talk for three hours straight. I don't know what it is. I really don't know, but I appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it, everyone. Um, Chrono Christ says that my, my GS elements of inspiration for the logo on the case back. Yes. I mean, that's the thing. They, they love to incorporate the line on their case backs, right? That's one of their symbols. Um, wondering if it would, the watch would look too kitsch if they put the lion on the dial instead of the GS logo. That's something. Um, looks like the lion and the British English flag. Yes. I mean, that's another thing. Again, talking about Tudor, you would imagine Tudor to use this kind of approach. Okay, Marcus, thank you. Gorgeous piece. Never seen one before. I don't know if we'll ever see it again. Um, never known that they'd done this. To Martin next. How cool is this? It's one of the cheapest watches in his collection. All of 150 pounds. Rotary Henley GMT. Rotary was a huge name back in the day. And I find it incredible that you can get a watch like this for, for 150 bucks. It's a quartz movement, right? It's just a daily beta watch. And you know where it's pulling its inspiration from. Of course, you can see it has the, the typical Explorer 2 elements that we know. But what a cool watch for the price. It's it's That's something that does blow our minds in this hobby is what you can get for money and uh some i mean some watches are just stupidly priced for what they are technically you know two more hours blue shirt says well if that's the case i'm gonna have to hit the coffee i've got a bit more left so uh let's carry on rotary quartz who would have thunk typical gmt layout orange hand gmt hand looks great just an easy day easy wearing work watch and uh steel bezel yeah i mean this is another thing don't you find a lot that steel bezels do attract too much attention the way they've been done just way too uh what do you say overemphasized in size this is pretty good to see it so slim uh, it does tone it down a lot more it actually feels more like less of an accessory and something a bit more complementary on the dial it's it's like a, a fluted bezel in a way it, it frames the watch and doesn't shout about its presence there on the dial i like it really do like the approach so martin it's great and rotary i mean i i think the way they do their type and their the wings and ugh, got some history brand has been around for a long time and obviously gone through its ebbs and flows i think the quartz crisis hit it pretty hard back in the day sadly so many brands really got kicked in the nads right yeah it's quartz samurai for sure Right, so we're going to move on next to Matthew. Martin, thank you for this. To a Mont Blanc. I've never seen this before. Let's get this right. Do dig the snow. I think this is one of the only snow shots we've seen. Mont Blanc, Nicholas. Oh, my goodness. There's his name. Nicholas Ryusek. Ryusek. It's good enough, right? Uh, and it's a mono pusher. I mean, that is cool. I can't see. There's the mono pusher on the crown. Hold on a sec. Mono pusher chronograph. 
Far out. I did not know that. And we were just talking about sub-seconds. How's this? Sub-seconds right here. I think this is actually how you read the seconds on this piece. Wow, hold on a second. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. These disks rotate independently. And okay. I like this. Wow. Mont Blanc is another brand similar to um similar to Longines and their heritage collection and those pieces in the past. This is an example here of the same kind of approach where they have so much, so much to pull from. Look at the Breguet numerals. I I think this might have to do with chronograph being working or not working, like the um the JLC deep sea diver. What do they call it? The the C mm, the JLC. Gonna get it. The deep sea chronograph, I think it has the same feature where you hit the chronograph and it'll split and then it goes, goes from white to blue, basically, highlighting if it's working or not. I really like this. And the date window, wow, this is something you would expect from horterology, hey? Blued hands, blued, blued screws, sector dial in a way, breguet numerals. You know what? Again, for anyone who's interested, it's the Mont Blanc Nicolas Ryusek Mono Pusher Chrono. Have a look. I don't know what they go for on online, but gee, got an onion crown. You've got everything you want out of a classic inspired watch. Excellent balance and symmetry there too. Ew, I'm, I'm impressed. Really impressed. Um, is the nine o'clock a moon phase? No, I th I'm pretty sure it's to do with a chronograph. And if it's working or not, it'll, it'll either split uh, white and blue or it'll go straight to white, depending on if it's working or not. Might be wrong. Might be completely wrong. This is all guesswork. Uh, reminds me of Alunga. It's incredible. I'm super impressed. And they have done some good stuff. They actually just released a handful of Mono Pusher Chronos recently. They, they're doing a good job with their pieces. I think they call them the 18, the 1815 collection. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. Motoring through. Let's carry on. How is, uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, I see Hans saying, Bing, two, two o'clock. Is that what you're thinking? The time? Oh, hold on a sec. You're right. It's now 2 p. Oh, it's so weird, man. So it's now technically 2 p.m. Oh, 2 a.m., sorry. Oh, dear. Now we have to reset our watches, as mentioned in the chat by Hans. Oh, damn it. Okay. Well, how are we going to do this? We've got half an hour to get through all these watches. Okay, I've got, got a motor. Next up, Matthew, thanks for sending this in. This is from another Matthew, and it is the Code 41. Code 41 watches is a micro brand, you could call them, that are doing some really cool stuff. And I'd love to get some hands-on time with them. Um, they are nailing it in this category of addressing movements a different way. I love open skeleton work dials. And here is an example of one that does it. He sent a huge selection. So I'm just going to flick through them as we do. Um, check out the box first off. How cool is that as a presentation? Well, magic mouse. How nice is that as a presentation? Um, I've seen this watch on a rubber strap. Personally, if, if I was going for one of these pieces, rubber strap would be my be my choice in this watch. But it is fascinating. I, I want to spend some time talking about Code 41 in future. Matt is in the chat. That's great. Um, I was I, I thought at very first that it was a spoof on the Code 1159. Uh, but no, Code 41 is a legitimate brand and they're doing some good stuff. I think the bridges are great. It's it's difficult. I can imagine it's difficult to capture. Let's see if we can get some more shots. This is it in hand. Yeah, there's lots of things to enjoy here. I think any open work watch should be appreciated. And just the way the bridges are, are lining, it's fun. It is a really nice example here. A shot of the movement at the back. Check that out. 10 atmospheres. <clears throat> Edition two, I didn't know that. And these are actually limited pieces, something else. Um, BDEV says, no need to rush. It's only 9 p.m. here in New York. Does this mean that everyone in Europe also goes forward an hour? God, I'm sorry, everyone. Everyone's now sitting there listening to me at like three in the morning. Ugh. It's commitment. I appreciate it. I really do. What a cool looking movement. I don't know if it's based on an ETA and then it's modified in places. Of course, they've had to completely shift the way the dial has been arranged in order to, to get this display the way it is. But it's so nice. I mean, you get to appreciate the mechanism of the crown stem, the mainspring, uh, the balance at the top there. Lots to take in. As an industrial designer, I can appreciate that stuff. I think it's it's important to take that and enjoy it. Um, really cool watch. I would want, I'd like to look at this brand a lot more. Uh, Code 41, have a look. Just type in Code 41 watches and you'll get the full spec sheet of what they've done. Um, 
but really cool, Matthew. One of one of the most interesting watches here. I'm going to be talking about them next weekend. Swallows arriving, Eric. Are you telling me they're landing in your trees outside? That's so funny. Uh, white accents. Yeah, it's cool. I could talk about this watch for a long time, but as we've been going for three hours now, I've got to carry on through. Matthew, thank you for this. Um, going to hop to Mo next, and you won't believe another sermon in a Lexus GS350. Really cool shot. I mean, as most of us know, photos and cars just always work. And it's to do with just how, you know, it's it's basically a, a large light box. So you can you can get all these different angles in. We were chatting about this earlier and how green is either a love it or hate it thing. Moose Man says 3 a.m. in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Uh, carbon fiber. Samurai, I think some of them are made from forged carbon. There are some examples out there. Um, so yeah, again, have a look at Code 41. There's some really good pieces out there. Really interesting. Um, Megan says it's 3.03 a.m. here in Paris. My Sunday will be setting all my watches to... Oh. Well, I mean, at least one thing, it gives you incentive to get hands on time with all your pieces. You can take that, you can take that nicely, Megan. But uh, I, I kind of pity you in a way. If you've got like 100 of them that need to be set. Everyone who owns quartz watches, I pity you the most. I guess if you have Casios, you're in good shape with the atomic clock synchronizing, but, you know, oh, that's funny. Shame. I really do pity you all. Um, testing one, two, three, another Kermit, or is it me? Pretty good, Megan. So, yeah, another another Kermit with a C, not with a K. Nice. And how's this? In this shot, in this angle, you see how olive it looks and not bright green. Less direct light makes such a difference for the presentation. And, you know, it's a good-looking piece. But it's definitely a love it or hate it. We've had a we've had enough debate on that. Turbo T2, you may need to drop. Oh, it's okay. Thank you so much for the super chat. I'm pretty sure. Sh- hold on, we're going to be featuring your Submariner later on, right? I'm pretty sure you're in here somewhere. Oh, and I have your story all lined up. You, you're the gent with the with the gorgeous, um, what's it called, the Alaska Project Speedmaster. I can see in your avatar there. Thank you for the super chat, man. Really, um, I look forward to getting to your 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 submariner in a second i hope (laughs) in a second stop apologizing for time you know time is precious when you're listening to me for three bloody hours i have to Um, mo thank you for this got to enjoy this i can't believe we've seen this like three times already uh to pat next how's this a seiko 5 rubber strap uh almost the exact same rubber strap that we saw in the seamaster earlier Really nice arrangement. And here's an example of a field watch, very Flieger-esque, right? With the numerals all arranged there and uh, sword hands and lollipop seconds. And yeah, I mean, the field watch, again, could go on and on about how cool they are as daily wearers. Um, Right, catching on with the chat. Mercedes-Benz, our hand in a Mercedes-Benz. That's one thing. I mean, this is a a Lexus, but I mean, close enough. It's It's the Mercedes of Toyota, right? Yeah, Lexus and Toyota are together. Please don't bash me. I've, I've been out of the car game for a while. <laughs> and Megan says, some of us need our beauty, beauty sleep. Yep, you and me both. You and me both. That's why these shows are nice spaced out over three weeks because we can all really sleep up until this point and then it's just a marathon, you know. It's a sprint. Okay, so uh, yeah. You can see typical Type B Flieger arrangement layout here. Very typical uh, date complication that we would expect from a Seiko. Seiko 5, I don't know if this is new. I haven't even mentioned the reference. Uh, it's, it's on a Barton blue strap, by the way, and it's a SNK807 for anyone who wants to know the reference. And uh, I feel like this is a brand new watch they've just introduced. I could be completely wrong. Me and my Seiko references, I am the worst. But awesome piece. It really is a stunning model. And uh, field watches. Get them, ladies and gents. They are a gem. Okay, going to motor on to the next. And this is all in her movements. If Penny is watching the show, we're going to enjoy an awesome AP in a second. Um, Hans says, time is a funny thing. Time is a very peculiar item. You see, when you're young, you're a kid. you got time. Hold on a sec. you got nothing but time. Throw away a couple of years, a couple of years there. Is, is this a song, I'm guessing, or, or a poem? Edgar Allan Poe. What? What's on? Oh, sorry, it's too late for me to <laughs> to recite that one. Um, is that an alloy case on that Seiko Five? You know what? It looks like one. Could be steel for. I really don't know. Could be aluminium. I really don't know what they do with these. I have not covered the Seiko Five. Built to be the watch that's more accessible for everyone out there. You know. Um, 
yeah, someone will have to cover me and, and fully explain it. I do not know. Um, moving on next to an AP, the AP. Now, this is a cool story because Penny is uh, a viewer of the page. She has an awesome channel too. I'm going to put her in the description. Let's see. All in her movements, I hope. I got that right. She has a YouTube channel. She loves chatting about um, all things watches. She loves rambling like me, so we, we get along pretty well. And this is, I'm, I'm guessing, I, I, I'm me and my references in the AP line, it's a 15500. It's one of the new models with a silver dial. And she picked it up from the AD, I think, this week. And it's, uh, it's really, really, really cool. It's a gem. I think this is the only AP we're going to look at. Uh, it's really blingy and shiny, but I think what it does, and I said really a lot there, I guess that's the, uh, the alcohol wearing off. Let's get a bit more coffee in me. I'll be with you in a sec. Let's have a look. As we know, the AP wears very distinctly the way it plays in the light. Just the braces and case alone, very flat, uh, has this light play all to itself. I think with a white shirt, Penny has just nailed it here, by the way. With a white shirt, this watch is so sleek. And and I, no, Andreas, I'm pretty sure this is a 40 mil. This is a 40 mil model. Um, or 39. God, I don't even know anymore. 41. I think that's what they're going for now, the 55, the 15 500s. Um, but it's just, it's such a nice pairing seeing it with white. And it's, as far as a lady's watch, this is just so slick. It's something that you never see around. The, the silver dial, especially, you see the blue dials and the black dials, but the silver dial, very under the radar. So, uh, and Megan's also mentioning, I didn't see this earlier, that Sunday with the Punters is happening tomorrow. And she's pasted the link in the chat. Check out Sunday with the Punters. I'm pretty sure I'm featuring something of theirs on the show, aren't I? It's always a great time hopping on there. So, would highly recommend it uh, if you don't follow them already. All of you who are watching, it's only three hours into the show, I'm mentioning this stuff. Sorry, everyone. Uh, yeah, awesome piece. And she also sent me a shot of her collection, which is great. So we can actually do a bit of a collection review. <laughs> I don't know how long this show is going to be. It might it might break records tonight. Uh, okay. So again, Fanny, congratulations. What I love is just we get to see all the little nuances to the brushing, the polishing. No brand does it like AP when it comes to finishing their their models, right? The way they, they do the vertical lines and, you know, the fixtures, it's just immaculate. It's so, so clean, sterile, but also designed, right? You can either love it or you can hate it at the end of the day. Let's jump to her collection. So this is what it's currently looking like. I mean, how cool is it that someone can have this kind of collection? Simple enough. I mean, it is it is Rolex heavy. I'll, I'll critique and say it's very Rolex and AP heavy, but that's what she loves. It does have a Speedmaster. I should say, I mean, she has all the essentials ticked, which is awesome. So when I think to essentials, I think Submariner, Speedmaster, fantastic. The oh, We could have so much fun dissecting this. The fun watch, the Milgas, I mean, that's cool. I think this is, I don't know if this is the blue dial, but the Milgas is the fun watch, right? The AP is the elegance. The Explorer is the real work watch. Yeah, it just doesn't stop. There's so many little things to take in here. Really nice basic collection that covers all bases. Um, we could have a good time discussing these. We could evolve this collection a bit, I think, too. Isn't her collection being reviewed tomorrow? Hold on a second. Am I getting my dates mixed up? I'm pretty sure Penny's collection is being discussed tomorrow on, on the Sunday with the Punters show. Uh, watch Talk with the Punters, sorry. I might be wrong. Someone correct me in the chat if, if you guys are there. So you're going to be seeing this tomorrow live. You can actually hear her talking about what she has and how she goes about collecting. So would recommend. Needs a dress watch, watching World Finance. This is this doubles pretty nicely as a dress watch now. But I mean, something with some leather, I would agree, would look good. Yeah, it's a dream. I mean, if it was me reducing this collection down to three, oh, it'd be so difficult. It would be so difficult. What would you do? It's, it's like virtually impossible, you know? You want to keep the sub, but you also want to keep the GMT and, and the Explorer. Oh, it's horrible. So she is, so her collection is being reviewed tomorrow. Okay, so anyone who wants to know, the, the YouTube link is in the top section of the screen. Megan's just put it in the chat. Check out the page. Subscribe to their page, and tomorrow at like, it'll be 8 o'clock UK time. I don't even know anymore. Uh, it should be debuting, though, so tomorrow. Here we go. Going to carry on through. Thank you for this, Penny. 
Her, she goes by the username All In Her Movements normally. Uh, she does, does hop on from time to time. We're going to jump to Raymond. Jeez, Raymond sent in a lot of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to be breaking records on the show tonight. Oh, dear. This is a new release from Longines. We chatted about the Heritage earlier, but this is, this is the Tuxedo Heritage model. Just released, I think, early this year. And like I've said, they've, they've pulled so many things out of their vintage catalog. And uh, it just doesn't stop. Um, what do we, where do we even go from here? Would highly recommend you look at the reviews on this watch. And you can see they've also done a tuxedo, chrono. Yeah, it's brand new, Samurai. I think they just came out. And Raymond's in the chat. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, yeah, where do you even start with this watch? I think they've just nailed the proportions of this piece. They have the Heritage Military. They have... All of these watches in this category, the Heritage class, the, the classic with the second dial. And now this is their new example of a tuxedo, you know, dress watch, basically. The six o'clock is cut off, Sam Ray. Yep, the six o'clock is most definitely cut off. That's so funny. Sub dial is nicely placed. I think just the way they've arranged the space, they've allocated everything. Look at the size of the crown. It all feels correct, you know? I'm the record breaker. Oh, geez, if I really go, if I go beyond four hours, I might die, so... Keep keep in mind that might be pretty entertaining to listen to. Um, awesome case backs. I mean, Longines just just nails it every single time. I I have immense appreciation for what they're doing in the heritage line. They have so many things to pull from. Their watches are great value, especially on the the gray market. You can pick them up. Excellent prices. I don't know. I've got a war and peace coming up in a second. Hold on a sec. Um, Really cool piece. There's so many things you can take away from this line. I've been looking at the Heritage Military a lot, and this is one that has definitely piqued my interest. Look at the open nines, and there's just a there's just a, so a myriad of categories that this watch covers. So yeah, would recommend. So we got some more from Raymond. Let's carry on. I'm missing you all in the chat here. So Raymond sent in. Uh, let's see, Seiko Presage. Okay, this should be good. Everyone who knows Seiko, I'm I'm not someone who does but the laurel was really the, the starting point for seiko right i think they call it the seiko laurel or this was the precursor he's featured a shot of the original watch and the next piece we're going to see is quite special rare and attractive we could say um this was inspired by the first seiko laurel from 1913 um it just had laurel on the dial okay in 1913 seiko introduced japan's first wristwatch the laurel okay so this is the arrangement and these are pretty special Sorry again about the magic mouse. It always, always irritates me. The reference SPB041J1. I'm guessing that is the um, <clears throat> the JDM reference to this model. And it's beautiful. It is truly, truly beautiful. I'm so glad, Raymond, thank you for sending this. I'm so glad that you you sent in you know, the original watch as a sample for us to see. Uh, remember, this is like World War I, just as the pocket watch was turning into the, the standard everyday wearer on the wrist, this is what they've done. So it's got a power reserve. It's got a, this looks like running, no, running seconds. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> At this point, I'm just sort of riffing whatever I see. JDM only, okay. Uh, Megan says she has seen this watch before. I mean, it's it's good, right? It's very good. Uh, and just the numerals are gorgeous. It sums up this time period very well. Uh, texture on the dial too is great. BDF saying these shows are so long you should feature marathon watches. We have in the past, you know, we have. Uh, and Joshua says this live show is such a great idea. Let's keep going until you raise the funds for a new chair. Thank you. <laughs> That'll take a while. It'll take a long, long while. But uh, you know what? It's all good. That's all good. That's funny, though. Bloody chair. You know, it's always something in our lives. Great looking example, Raymond. And we're not done yet because now we're going to jump to some more Yemmers. Going to really, really appreciate some Lemmers in a second. Um, I see Sari Bell, one, two, three, four, five. Welcome for anyone who else who's joining. Absolute pleasure having you here. You're running the show for three hours. So forgive me if I'm a bit slow at reading the chat. It's a beautiful example, man. Really is. I, I love that little bit of history. And we have the back, of course, to enjoy. And it uses a 6R27B movement. Uh, I wish I knew that what that exactly meant. Um, I didn't cover the full spec of the movement complication, but Raymond summed this watch up very well. Again, for anyone who wants to know, it's the SPB041J1. Um, and it's probably the most faithful recreation of the first Seiko ever made. And I love that. 
I, something about reissue watches to me that just wins every single time. Okay, not done yet from Raymond. Let's get to the Mario Andretti. Uh-oh, hold on. Now, because the uh, the page crashed earlier, I've had to do a bit of jiggery-pokery to rearrange everything, so I hope, hope it's okay. Now, this watch is very famous. Um, these were awarded to drivers in the 60s and the 70s who won things like the Indy 500. And the Mario Andretti, of course, uh, he won this, I think, for an Indy 500 one year his name's engraved on the back and it's got this full history to it so yema has just recreated it and we've actually featured original vintage ones of these on the show before i love it the day of the dead mask it's a gem oh forbin's giving us more here saying porcelain dial they make a less expensive version it's very nice enamel white forbin thank you that's a good point i'm not going to pull the watch back up again but it has a porcelain dial and many factors to it so raymond's saying f1 oh i love it it's one of my favorite chronos in this category. You know, the dashboard looking subdials, so true to that era. And this is the modern example, as we see it has France printed at the base. I could be completely wrong, but uh, we have had vintage ones on before. So we've got it on a strap. We've got it on a NATO, uh, leather NATO. Look at the way the dial has been done. It's just amazing. Uh, the case back we can enjoy. Yema has some superb case backs on these pieces. And you can just see, I mean, that knight's head is just it's a gem. Uh, Andretti's signature at the back there. Um, this is on a rally strap at the moment. And then we have a commemorative coin. I think this is featured with the watch. And here we have some, some imagery to go with it. That looks like Andretti with the watch on his wrist and the original from back in the day. And so it goes. An absolute win in the chronograph segment. I think I should get myself one of these, honestly. Um, I enjoyed that much. The date complication where it's placed is gorgeous. Bjorn, thank you. He says, you deserve that new chest. Thank you so much, Bjorn. Honestly, I will get myself one. Uh, this is this is getting quite bad at this point. This chair is, it's nice. It does the job, but it does, you know, it's, I think she's seen uh, her years. It's so funny. Uh, thank you. It's really, Bjorn, that's so, so good of you. I appreciate it so much. Um, and for anyone else joining in, I've missed you all in the chats. Let's see what else is going on here. Porcelain dials, fork hands. <laughs> I can't say that. Fork handles, right, right. Um, date of the six, it's just superb. Can't say anything wrong about this um, gorgeous machine. Biono again. Biono has sent some of the most incredible watches in the past. I'd love to feature your Grand Seikos again. He has such excellent taste. His, his shots made the top 100 best of last year, I think. Um, yeah. I mean, it's awesome. Bjornar, please send in more shots in future. And Sam Ray, new chair fund. Thank you. Uh, geez, that'll be a joy. I really need to get a new one. Uh, this is getting bad at this point. I recommend Noble chairs. For sure, suggestions would be good. Send me some emails. Anything you, you would suggest would be awesome. Um, I need something, a proper, you know, solid, heavy-duty one. Okay, I've got a motor on. This is awesome, Raymond. These, these submissions were great. From Yema, Seiko, Longjean Heritage. You nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. And Bjorn, oh, thank you again, really. 1969 pieces only, Raymond. I've got to get my eye on these then. Ah, oh, they're awesome. Just look at it. You can just appreciate the balance and the quirkiness, the fun that it has there. Okay. Now, this is from Rory. I don't know how well we can see this presentation. We can try. This is called the AP Classic. I kid you not. And it is an Odoma Piguet that we know and love. And it's I mean, here we have the spec sheet, which is great. 18 carat manual wound. It's 32 mils in size. It's it's six millimeters thick on an alligator strap, tang bottle, you know, the, the full deal. Ivory it reminds me of, and I think we have another shot of it, do we? Mm -mm, I think this is the best shot I saved. Hold on. Uh, no, this is it. Sadly, this is all we have to look at, but it is a gem. Um, fits the wrist of eight inches. Jeez, that's that's pretty bold. Uh, I'm guessing this is the sheet that they gave you as a service point. But how cool is it? They, I mean, this is the thing. AP, prior to the Royal Oak, and still, I mean, they make some awesome pieces in the millinery line and others. Uh, they're just so subtle. This reminds me of, of watches like Piaget and, and pieces around there. Elegant classic dress watch. It's small, though. you got to say, it's pretty small. Um, so I'm going to carry on. I see a mention of a Herman Miller. I'm going to talk about that in a second. I actually designed for Herman Miller, would you believe? Um, what am I doing now? Going to the next shot from Rory, which was a Connie and a Seamaster. I love these two together. I'm going to enjoy some nice close-ups of these two in a sec. 
how cool is that? The constellation, especially mid 2000s. Going to have a look at some awesome pictures. Thomas, thank you, man. New chair fund. This is getting ridiculous. I can quite literally get one now. I honestly, nuts. Thank you so much, everyone out there. So Turbo T2 says, as an industrial engineer, you can't go wrong with Herman Miller. Yes, I designed for Herman Miller for a while. Did some projects, actually, um, international-based projects, reaching out to Botswana and Kenya. That was really fun. And uh, the Aeron chair, as nice as it looks, it's not the most comfortable chair to sit on for extended periods of time. Uh, I can attest to that. Uh, they all look great. I mean, I, who was the designer again? I should know this. I know the guy. I know what he looks like, but I can't put a name to him. <sighs> I've actually listened to presentations of his. I mean, he's a great dude, but I can't remember his name. It's an awesome chair, though. But just it's stylistically, it looks great. Uh, 245, confirm, deny. You guys are dicks i love you you're so good uh and thomas thank you again for the super chat man oh, jesus it's getting nuts it's getting absolutely nuts i literally can't get a chair i don't know so much about a herman miller freaking aeron chair though that's a little bit next level so let's get back to the watches courts and constellation um where do you even start I, we can see a typical we can see a taste here about uh gold and balance and, and where he's looking let's have a look at this watch in more detail context Again, because the page crashed, I have everything I had everything lined up and prepped. So we're going to have to look at these in a bit of a random order. Look at that bracelet. He mentioned to me in the email that it's just so understated. Even today, it's it's casual enough to be worn as a dress watch, and it's uh, it's just awesome. Of course, it's what makes the constellation a gem is that it has this uh, the Geneva what is it the Geneva Observatory at the back. And this is what sums up just accuracy. The whole idea behind the constellation was to be the most accurate watch that Omega makes. And they've uh, carried that through now with the Globemaster line. Really done a great job with how they've uh, normally where the, the Globemaster is signified. And the constellation is this five-pointed star, which also has to do with their accuracy. And they've really hammered that home now with their new meta certified movements and all of those factors. So yeah, it's a gem. Now this watch does feel kind of 80s, got to admit, but still it's a timeless piece. And they've just been bringing out new ones actually. Ceramic bezels and cases and everything there. It's uh, it's awesome. Angel Heart, I haven't seen that movie. Uh, oh my God, this is going ridiculous. What are you guys doing? Bjornar, thank you. God, this, now I can get a bloody Herman Miller chair. Jeez Louise. And and Doug UK, another oh guys, thank you. What am I gonna do? What am I going to do? <laughs> get the bar house chair. What is going on here? I am I'm losing it here. But you can't be doing this at like the three hour mark. You know, I, I barely have any enthusiasm left in me. So jeepers, thank you. Bjorno and and Doug UK. I cannot, cannot thank you enough. Yeah, this is definitely going to a new chair now. This is decided. And you'll never hear a squeak again. How cool is that? Gee. It'll definitely go to the channel. I mean, that does help. Help me over the hours prepping these videos. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Seriously, please stop now. It's enough. No more. Please, please. Just listen to the last few minutes of me talking before I run out of breath. That's all. You know, uh, Joshua, oh, now it's going to start again. Joshua, thank you. Um, if, if I don't finish the show, it's because my wife is having contractions. You're kidding me. Really? Jeez, Joshua, that is amazing. Wow. Okay. Well, you've got a few hours ahead of you. Um, so that's something. Your wife is in labor and you're watching my show. I don't know how that's working out, but <laughs> congratulations, Joshua. I really hope you have a smooth sail over the next few hours. And um, cool. that's a time to celebrate. Really is amazing. Okay, guys, thank you. Really, I've got to get back to this. I've been chatting now for three and a half hours. This is not going to be a four hour show. I refuse. Beautiful photos, uh, Rory. Uh, mid 2000s, Omega Constellation, automatic, stunning. Uh, it's a real gem of its time. Yeah. <laughs> so Penny is here. Uh, all in the movement, still here. I was rambling on the phone. Well, your watches are amazing. I'm going to definitely touch on them later on in the next show, I think. Sam Ray is next. Pull up the squale to finish. Thank you, Eric. Eric, you're such a class act. Thank you, sir. That's awesome. Uh, Sam Ray sent in. This is cool. Let me try and get this right. Okay. So his dad just turned 49. And uh, I think he had his birthday on, on the 20th of March too, the same as my dad, if I remember right. And uh, this is the watch that he decided to buy for his dad, which is the SRPD 
21, Save the Ocean 2019. Now, he owns the 2018 version, which is really cool. So he now has both of them side by side, and you can see the nuances. If they, oh, there are some differences. Okay. Immediately, I can see that the uh, the dial is very different between the two. We've got more of an Aquaterra arrangement there, which is nice. Um, the bezels are different. The bezels actually, this is cool. I like this texture to it. Let's get it up again and have a look. Awesome looking watch. Everyone loves a turtle. I mean, it's just the way it is. I think these are the most popular. These are becoming the most popular in their dive category. Um, all great to have the, the, like the one that I have, the um, the Prospex SPB143, but the turtle, the 6105 and the SRPDs, and oh God, it just doesn't stop. Those models, the SRPs, I should say, are getting more and more attainable and they've got everything i mean this also falls under the prospects line grenades and, and so many factors there too yeah guys i really can't i can't thank you enough for all the, the super chats i've been ridiculous come on now it's enough i got please stop please stop and just sit back and enjoy the last couple of minutes um i'm flattered honestly really flattered there's going to be a new chair coming out of this fully um okay Got to carry on. Sam Ray, this is awesome. I think it's special. What I find most special is that you and your dad can now wear the same watch. Uh, I think that's great. I want to buy my dad an Omega one day soon. And hopefully it'll be an Aquaterra. I'm eyeing that green dial Aquaterra. I think it'll be ideal. He seems to love the balance on the dial and all of that there. Um, amazing. Oh, and Megan mentions in the chat, all the best and the birth of your... You know, you've got to get the baby's birth watch now, uh, Joshua. If you're still in the chat... Man Ray, <laughs> uh, you've got to think of what the birth watch is going to be. That's pretty special. Get yourself a Rolex to celebrate. I think that would be cool. Right, moving on to Thomas. Thomas H, I've named him as. And I have never seen this piece in my life before, but how cool is this? It's called the Omega Admiralty Reference 136.01 from the 1970s. What a gem. Orange hand but looks like a W10, but has more like an IWC arrangement with the hook on the seven, has a Cyclops, a square Cyclops, acrylic crystal, kind of explorer to it as well. How nice is this piece? Just take it all in, sit back and have a look. I'm impressed, really impressed by how this is done. Um, you just don't see, imagine if they brought out this watch today, would it be popular? Would people, uh, and the anchor, yes, Eric, you just mentioned it here. How nice is that? A kinked anchor. I don't know what this symbolizes. Is this a part of their Seamaster? This is not a Seamaster. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But the orange accents really do speak nicely between the hand and that anchor arrangement. The, uh, the, the fully, I mean, they pretty much took inspiration from the, the W10 with the rail track. And they was asking Andreas the reference. It's a reference 136.01. And it's called the Omega Admiralty. <clears throat> so have a look at that. Really... <laughs> This this is a watch that does like get my creative juices flowing. You could bring this back and have an absolute win of a watch in this category. This could rival the Hamilton car keys and all of those pieces. Can you imagine they brought a field watch out like this again? Petty officer racing badge. Oh, there we go. You see, Eric Bell knows his stuff. I mean, he, uh, he studied up on this. He experienced this. So the, it's called the Killick Anchor. Okay, so K-I-L-L-I-C-K -L -L -I anchor is a petty officer rating badge. Thank you for that, Eric. It's good to have a man from the Navy in the chat discussing this stuff. What a cool machine, man. I am enamored. And this is one of the last few submissions. I mean, we're going to, it's quite amazing. We're, we're not going to hit the four hour today. Thank God. <laughs> it's going to be good. Uh, Han says, lived it. That's awesome. That is really awesome. I kind of dig the Cyclops, Duke. I don't know. Um, Something about an acrylic Cyclops is pretty fun. And the fact that it's square as well, I do like it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just losing it. It's oxygen deprivation. That's what I'll say. Okay. So, Toby, you're going to be coming up last because your stuff is superb. We're going to jump to – got some good stuff now. Um, let's have a look at, at Ziraha first. This is nice. Grandmother's Roma from the 70s his grandfather bought this for her and she's still rocking it today look at the size of this thing i think if anything we can appreciate he was in the chat earlier we can appreciate just how tiny ladies watches were back in the day i mean this is on a woman's wrist right wait until you see it on a man's wrist you're gonna laugh um 
Where's a better shot? This is a close up. Okay. Roma is a cool brand, by the way. They have some good stuff. Some good, good stuff. 245 ain't changing, Han says. Hmm. No, I think it'll be 255 at this point. I think. Uh, by, by the sounds of it. Square Cyclops is not bad. It's strange. It is peculiar. Um congratulations soon to be fine again we should all congratulate joshua i mean amazing really is i don't know how anyone can be watching this show while their wife is in labor uh that that blows me away is it the sense of calm you get out of these or is it something that helps put you to sleep both maybe um i'd recommend it to her it's probably her contractions would probably decrease a lot listening to me talking uh, it'll put her to sleep nuts okay um so this is the funny thing so this is the watch you get the presentation i see it on a male wrist <laughs> oh he's actually had it restored oh awesome okay didn't realize so as we've actually featured before ziraha is actually quite big on restoring pieces this is it in its original form look at the size of this thing i don't know what it is it's like 19 mils in size or something daft uh, and for all of you who are still watching, don't go away because the next few watches that you're going to see, great. There's a lunger coming up, one of my favorite lungers. Uh, yeah, so I'm really impressed by this. This watch actually has been restored and it looks brand new considering its age. I love it. Really nice story. And uh, the fact that his grandmother is still wearing it today, it's still in the family. Oh, amazing. Just amazing. Okay, the last few submissions. We are jumping to... Should we have a look at watching World Finance next? I don't know if he's still here with us, but he sent in some good stuff. Deep Sea. Deep Sea that he picked up outside of Philadelphia. These are some of the last submissions I saved. And I love, one thing I really dig is how you've caught the light of whatever this is, like a roof rack or something above you here to, to contrast the, the dial. It really looks nice. Yeah, we all need to congratulate Joshua. It is uh, one hell of a time. I really hope it's smooth sailing. Get the epidural. Don't be a fool. Get the epidural. It'll save you a lot of pain. <laughs> save her a lot of pain, <laughs> I should say. Uh, hitting the wine. Right. Deep sea, 44 mil. <clears throat> I like what they've done with, uh, with this original gas escape. It, it does bring down the overall size of the dial a lot more and feels like a much more wearable 44. Watching World Time Finance is still here. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and try the air and gas, Hans says. We're talking, ab <laughs> talking about anesthetics. You don't want to go too hard on the anesthetics. We can avoid it. And try and avoid C-sections unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, anyway, getting really deep into the... I'm, I'm by no means a gynecologist, but, um, you know, I've studied a bit of medicine in my time. Awesome. Made her feel way more relaxed. Yeah, that's good. Yes, my wife did the epidural. Good call. So next up, we've just had a look at a couple of Rolexes already during the show. We're going to have a look at a Moza. Ooh, I want to save that all last. Next up is a Seiko Ripley. Watching World Finance, you have a nice taste of pieces. So called called the Ripley, the 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 Jujaro. Awesome piece. Uh, it's got everything you would want. I think it's a mechanical quartz movement, if I'm not wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> Joshua says, I'll take the painkiller. She's a boss. Uh, this is... A home birth, if all goes well. Good grief. Good luck there, sir. If it's a water birth, yep, go for it. Uh, that's going to be a good time. Uh, really good luck. I think we can all wish you good luck um, that side. Give, guys giving women advice, dude. Yeah, that's how we do it, right? We think we know everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got a Mecca Quartz. I, I find this piece fascinating. I mean, it's <clears throat> similar to the Yammer. Um, the, the Andretti watch that we saw earlier and, and others kind of uh, 2001 a space odyssey in the way it's been done. Uh, unfortunately you're going to have to set the time now because we've moved back a couple of hours and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's just great. Fully brushed. <clears throat> Jujara did have some swing and misses in this category with a lot of things he designed from cars to watches, very uh, characteristic traits. Most of us can identify in a lot of his, his, uh, pieces and you know automobiles that he made back in the day came up with really nice contrast though everything about it you know the, the yellow accents orange the dials very charismatic and fun the pushes kind of weird but i mean it works works pretty well pretty awesome this is technically a re technically a reissue yeah of course of course it is yeah it's nice really is nice i love i love how the colors have been done and it's just so truly clear that you can see it's a jaro model 
And then finally, the last Moza of the show, one of the most beautiful endeavors they made. And the story goes with this. I'm trying to remember this right. But you picked this up in London, and the blue was because of your wedding. This is technically your wedding watch. One a hell of a wedding watch. Yeah, got to say. I mean, this is like, it's it's just beautiful. The 12, the 12 at the top. This is probably one of the most elegant Moses they make um, in this category. It's just so clean. I don't even know what this dial is. Is it a is it a salmon dial? Is it a gold dial? Or is it a champagne? Beautiful machine. Moser is getting a lot of kudos and credit, and rightly so. It was a slow burn in the beginning. A lot of us have been harping on about how great they are, and many are slowly jumping on these pieces. I, I can see lots of gray market sellers are, are highlighting them and telling everyone how great they are. This deserves lots of praise for what it is. Look at the typeface. God, oh, I can't get enough of it. Some comments. Uh, let's see. Josh was saying Seiko is the only in-house movement manufactured outside of Europe, Correct. I don't know, Joshua. I don't know if you should be thinking about that right now when your wife is in labor, but maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's good that you can divide your attention. You're, you're well on the ball there. I think they are, right? I think they are. We talk about German watches too. Uh, most of them use, <laughs> most of them use um, uh, ETA-based calibers a lot of the time. Chrono Craze. The Chrono does a, uh, a sweep unlike, oh, of course, the reset. The reset is, is electronic. Yeah, that's very typical to Seiko for sure. How beautiful is this? You know, Moser, Moser, Moser. Citizen, Eric says. I mean, Eric knows his stuff. So Citizen is another manufacturer out there. Mike says, been watching the last couple of hours. More, more enjoyable than anything else on TV. Wow. Jeez, that's flattering, Mike. Thank you for, for joining in. I, I love it. I know many watch these shows just sitting, you know, in the background, not commenting or anything. And I appreciate it so much. Um, I hope you enjoy that the banter, whatever goes on here. Uh, Forben. Is BST British summertime minus one GMT? Forbin, I have no less idea than a goat. I'll tell you that much. Less idea than a goat. Uh, I'm new to this part of the world. Uh, I know GMT, uh, but that's it. You know, I'm from South Africa. And I'm still very new to this this climate. Who you say? Uh, okay, let's carry on. So this is one of the winners of the show. But the final few submissions. I love the story behind this next. It's a Submariner. Okay. Uh, which is kind of cliche, okay, but the best thing of all is just how it worked out. And this shot was taken in Hawaii, okay, holiday in Hawaii from Tyler. Now, Tyler, he was here earlier. He um, had the, oh, I forgot his username, but he had the, the oh, what is it called? I'm getting so tongue-tied now. The, um, what's that one? The white-faced Speedmaster, the, the, I had it earlier and I've just lost it. This is now this is now the three hour mark. I'm losing control. Um Turbo, you're still in the chat. Awesome. Uh what is what the hell is that damn name? The the polar oh God, I don't know. I'll get there eventually. So this is the story. I'll try and remember the Alaska project. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I made a video about the damn thing. How could I not remember? So let's try and understand that there's a lucky boutique experience, basically. So what happened? This was just through pure coincidence. How's that rainbow, by the way? What a beautiful shot. You're making me so, so jealous. Okay, so what happened was he and his wife went on a holiday to Hawaii, and they just, you know, just traipsing around, going shopping, enjoying themselves. And I'm, this, I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, uh, Turbo T2, so <laughs> let me know <laughs> if I get this right. So you go into the Rolex boutique, and you say, I want what everyone else wants. And uh, the story goes is that the lady behind the counter actually worked at the boutique in Los Angeles, California, where you picked up your Alaska Project Speedmaster. And that one has an amazing story too, how it traveled across the world essentially before it got to you, right? ID guy is hallucinating, thinking of new chair possibilities. Forbin, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, so, so it just happens that you managed to meet the same person who worked in the California AD who is now working in the, in the Rolex AD. And you put your name down, blah, blah, did all that. And your wife said to you, um, what are the chances that you're going to get the phone call? Wouldn't it be cool? And you did. Like 24 hours later, you did. And they basically said, we've had this watch. We wanted it for someone who really would appreciate it. And because you had a history buying the Speedmaster and that awesome story behind the Alaska Project model, which has been featured on this channel before, um, you got this watch on holiday. I'm so jealous, man. It's depressing. <laughs> It's just great. I love it. Uh, what can we say wrong about 
the, of course, this being the one two zero one the one two one two four zero six zero. That's the one, right? Uh, yeah, it's a gem. Another amazing story to be attached to a new watch. I love it, and I've got to congratulate you. It's it's superb. I hope I got that reference right, the the story right. Um, it's just awesome, really. Is uh, Samurai new chair should have the ID. Go. I mean, that would be cool. I could easily do that, Samurai. Stitch the logo on there. Yeah, awesome story. This is uh, one of the best stories of the show, which is why it deserved to be featured. And I hope I got the, the specifics right. But we are coming close to the four-hour mark. <laughs> it's possible for you, Clam. Yeah, for anyone out there. It really is. As long as you come across as someone who is a true enthusiast. And, I mean, it would it would yeah, be a win. Um, sub no date. That's what's not to love. Ah, it is just a gem. I agree, Megan. This watch, to me, is... Uh, Pretty much in that grail category for me at the moment. I would love to get my my bum into the seat of one of these. Who knows? Love the story. Excellent photograph as well. I mean, it's just, you know, the rainbow sums up the experience. And uh, yeah, got to congratulate. Got to congratulate everything behind that. Okay, let's finish off. Last submissions. Before we get to the four-hour mark, I've got to close this off in the 15-minute uh, zone. We're going to have a look at some pieces from Toby. And he sent in these two shots. Now, there's one watch here that I think will draw our attention more than the other. Uh, no guessing to what that watch will be. But I liked seeing them together. Got some Charlie Brown action. We got a Panda Daytona as the last watch sent in. And funny, this still has its stickers. Are these put on? I think these are put on aftermarket to protect the, the polished links. That's funny. But there's another watch in the scene that deserves a lot of love and attention and a real piece to cap off the show. And it's the Saxonia Thin Boutique Edition, essentially, with this gorgeous, like stunning starburst dial. So Panda Daytona, watch my video on text on watches. You'll see my, my loves and my loathes about them. Uh, that came out this week. Uh, it's a cool watch, but uh, it's, we speak about it all the time, you know, you know. Guys are guys are egging each other on about the uh, the time when the show would finish. I love it. You guys are great. Um, so, Aventurine Dial. I think it is Thomas. I think you're right. I I did not do enough uh, research into this piece when when it came up, but I think that is it. Aventurine is the is the color. It's the finish in total. Uh, you guys are the worst. Hans and Eric. You guys are like. You'd be you'd be the school bullies in a classroom, I think. It's a joy. I love it. So look at the finishing there. It's just such a nice watch to end the show. And of course, we have oh uh, Russell normally ends these shows. As we know, Russell's generally in the chat at this time and be discussing his, you know, phantom uh, datagraph and his his phantom Zeitwerk and everything there. But this yeah. This is just great. I don't, I don't even know what they go for today. And again, they only, they only are boutique uh, exclusives as far as I know. But outlier watches. Is this an example of an outlier? I would say so. Kind of epitomizes this whole series. And it is just a win. Still has plastic protectors on the lugs. Good man. So a lot of you know this more than me, so you can probably explain it better. Clam Walker says, bring it home. I sure will. Uh, it has copper flakes in the adventuring dial to make it sparkle, Turbo. And it's supposed to be like the, the night sky. And you know, as far as a dress watch goes, the, the one downside of the Saxonia Thin is it can be way too simple for, for daily wearing, I think. There's a time when you get too simple. This watch, what it does is it has that visual play on top of the simplicity to it. So there's just so much you can enjoy as far as a daily wearer goes, as, as far as something that you can just, you know, can you imagine wearing this in a boardroom and people would just be staring at this all the time? I mean, you, you deliberately wear it above your cuff so everyone sees it, you know. You rest your hand on your face as you're talking and everyone would be looking at that dial. It's a good thing and a bad thing, we would say, right? It's a hell of a distraction, to say the least. Grapes of Wrath, uh, back of class. Yeah, Eric, you'd be in the back of class like pea shooting or you know, throwing erasers at people or uh, elastic bands, elastic bands with paper, shooting them across the room. It's great. It's just great. Um, yeah. Would you wear this watch with a star tie? Probably. Possibly. Yes. Uh, does it have a comet in the sky under the two indices? You know what? I mean, that's probably just the light play in the room. It's probably just the above light. But I mean, imagine. Imagine if it had like a cosmos. 
Can you just for a second think what how amazing squeaking chair stop it? Can you imagine just how amazing this watch would look with a, a proper ground faux enamel dial, hand painted? What they could do, the potential, the possibilities that this watch could have um, in this category, just in the Saxonia thin line. That's a room for opportunity. I think we need to try and get that across to longer. Oh, it's beautiful. What a way to end the end the show. Um, yeah, and as Blue Shirt says, he's a sucker for blue. This this is it. This epitomizes it. Let's try and get another shot in before we end up. This is probably one of the best off axis. This is strange. I think you might be right, Megan. I don't know what's going on here. If you can get the two, I don't know if that is down lighting or if that's just luck of the draw that we have this cosmic effect going on. But how is that for two? I mean, this epitomizes the show. On the on the right hand side, we have the outlier. Left hand side, we have the cliche. <laughs> I love that. I think it's such a fascinating, you know, take cliche. I say in in quotations, obviously. Yeah, it's been a good show. It's been a lot of fun, and luckily. We are not ending at the uh, the four hour mark, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You've been very patient with me. I got to thank you so much for uh, for being here and listening to me prattle on for however long, uh, with with all sorts going on in the background, the page crashing and everything there. And everyone was saying that two fifty five would be the close off time. We are going to be closing off at two fifty ish. I hope. I hope. Yeah, Hans. I'm afraid you're not going to win this time. And I don't think uh, Eric did either. The two school bullies need to need to take it on the chin. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure watching World Finance. Everyone else, longer over Daytona for me as well, Thomas. I mean, it's it's just class. Outlier. It just sums it up. But the thing is, then, what about the Moser Endeavor? It's so difficult. This hobby just you get to this meeting point where you don't know where to go. Your head is just spinning. <laughs> Uh, Teristas just got here. Don't worry. It was a it was a disaster in certain points. You'll enjoy it. Um, hopefully, I kept my head enough. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to close this off now before I put you all to sleep. Uh, again, we have to congratulate Joshua for his – hold on, stop screen – for his son or his daughter on the way. His wife is expecting. She is currently like in labor, I believe. So – uh, I hope he's still here with us. I hope nothing's uh, out of place and you're sorting yourself out well. But um, to all of you here, thank you. It's been three weeks since we last done one of these shows and I'm sure we'll do another one in two weeks' time or so. Next weekend, there's going to be a show and it's on a different subject completely, but it should be a lot of fun. Lots of question-based, lots of design discussions. Uh, it's a new segment that I want to introduce, kind of like a, a quarterly roundup, basically, as a summary. Um, so yeah, to all of you in the world, Thank you so much for being a part of the show, for sending these pieces in. It always just, you know, we get to see so much in such a short period of time. If you can consider four hours a short period of time. <laughs> uh, lots of love, ladies and gents, and for the super chats tonight. God, I don't know what to do now. I really don't. I need to look at chairs. That's the next step. Um, have a superb weekend. Have an excellent Sunday. And new videos will be out next week, as always. And uh, look after yourselves, keep yourselves busy, occupied, keep working, keep your head down, get some good sun and some good weather, hopefully, in the next few weeks. And uh, that's that'll be all, ladies and gents. Thank you again. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now.